Hi guys, this is my tutorial for any percent in Banjo Kazooie. Just a quick note before we start, this category is only run on PAL, so if you don't have PAL console, you won't be able to run it. If you have a US or Japanese console, it won't work. If you have a European, Australian, and I'm sure there's places I'm forgetting. If you have yeah, Europe or Australia, anything PAL, that'll work. The way you can check is if it has a language selection screen and you can choose English, French or Dutch, then it is PAL. These are the leaderboards for this category. Um, they're on a website called speedrun.com. That's where a lot of the games are now. Uh, we're interested in this category, 80%. Um, if you're running NTSC, you can do 100% or any percent no RBA. Um, if you're running PAL, you want to do any percent. Um, I'd actually recommend if you're starting out you should probably have a go at Sandcastle percent. It's similar to any percent. It's got all the same major skips, except it's a little bit easier. It's it's a really fun category. You learn the major skips. You just don't have to worry about grabbing jiggies really precisely. Sandcastle percent uses cheats. Any percent doesn't. That's the difference. Um, in terms of what controller to run with, um, I'd recommend a first party controller with a first party joystick. Unfortunately, first party joysticks wear out really easily. So what I do personally is I replace these cogs inside the joysticks. Sometimes they're called guides. Um, it's a bit finicky. Sometimes you have to sand them down to get them to turn right. And it makes you a bit nervous knowing that you've replaced them in a joystick if you're doing a run. So I always get really nervous when I use them. But I got my PB with them, so they do the trick. I have a 122.16 that um, I'm waiting to put up on here, but it should be up shortly. Uh, I'm running on emulator today, so I'll be using this adapter. I just thought I'd show you how I'm doing it. Yeah, so I'll be using a first party joystick today. Um, another option is you could use a GameCube stick. There's nothing wrong with that. It can be a bit oversensitive though. So if you're trying to grab notes on the edge of a ledge or something, then GameCube stick can be really hard to use. I think um, I think Smasher32 made a video on controllers, and since that video was made, some of the issues with GameCube sticks have been fixed. So you mentioned that they were too sensitive and you couldn't do a circle with them, I think. And now you can do a circle with them. They used to not update every frame, but now they do. So that issue has been fixed. You can get a good time with a GameCube stick. I had a 130 and 90% and a 120 and Sandcastle percent. So there's nothing stopping you. It's just if you're getting really serious, you should probably go to first party. Um, I'd also recommend watching the other guides for this game, especially the 100% tutorial by Smasher32. Even if you're not running 100%, you can pick up some useful tips from it. And yeah, just watch all these because a lot of them are shorter ones, but they're really useful to watch. Alright, first thing I should talk about is the joystick range. So, I've got a GameCube stick plugged in at the moment. I'll probably do this run on a normal joystick. And i got these watches up just to help at the moment. So, um, I've got numbers up here that will show my button inputs for either most actually yeah the whole run they'll show my button inputs so yeah uh, the joystick comes up as a coordinate that's my Y that's my X coordinate um, you'll notice the numbers are going up to around 90 that's really good uh, the reason for that is because I'm using a GameCube stick the whole range for the N64 joystick is actually negative 128 to 128 but I don't think any controllers go that far Banjo uses half of that range, so you at least want your controller to go up to, from negative 64 to 64 in all directions. If it doesn't do that, Banjo won't move at full speed. I'll try and show that. 54 there, he's not moving at full speed. So yeah, you need to get up to 64. So it's probably a good idea to get one of those adapters and just have this game on emulator firstly, so you can do testing. Secondly, so you can test your joystick as well. So make sure you get the power on if you're playing it on emulator and you're practicing this category. You should say Europe or something that needs that language selection screen. 
Alright, so that's your joystick range. I'm going to plug in a first party and show you the difference. So that is a GameCube one. It's really good range. The only issue is it's really a bit too sensitive. The updating issue and doing circles, which is the same thing, that's been fixed. So I got a first party stick in now and you'll see that goes from negative 75 to 67, negative 72 to 66. So you can see what I mean by the GameCube sticks have a really good range on them. Um, I can probably get it further, I can get it to like 84, but you have to push really hard and you're not going to remember to do that in the run. Often the reason that that happens is the joystick will sit further down in the controller. So you get the full range, you'll have to pull back so hard that it kind of lifts up and can go a bit further. Which, you're probably going to forget to do in a run, so it's good to have that range nice and comfortable. So I just want to talk about movement in Banjo as well. So, we want to look at this velocity watch here. Obviously, faster velocity is good, that's what we want. So I'll just start walking, and you can see there's a bit of acceleration takes me a while to get up to full speed, which is 500 when normal walking. We can kind of avoid that though by jumping and get to 500 pretty instantly. Sorry, I just left something in. Alright, I can get to 500 pretty instantly. Uh, what's quicker than walking and jumping though is rolling before you have talent drop. So, roll and you'll get around 600. But you'll notice that there's a stop at the end of the roll. So, what you want to do is jump out of that roll. And you'll keep... Well, you'll get to 500 velocity. And you won't have that stop where you have to accelerate back up again. So, you roll and you jump out of it. But then you'll also notice there's a stop at the end of your jump. So, what you want to do is you want to roll, jump and flap. Uh, that could be a bit long. You want to get as many rolls in as possible because they're faster. So if you can, what you want to do is roll, jump, and flap close to the ground. And hopefully you'll hit the ground and you flap and it'll cancel it. Like that. Yeah, so when I'm cancelling the flap, that's the movement that you want. If the whole flap goes, that's bad. Those last two that I did there, that's what you want. So if you can do that, but try and be earlier rather than later, because if you miss the flap, that's a lot worse than if your flap just went for too long. So optimal movement, roll, jump, flap. And if your flap gets cancelled, then that just means you get more rolls in. If you don't flap, it's bad because you lose that speed when you land from your jump. Alright, so that's movement before you get Talon Shot. Once you get Talon Shot, uh, you'll see the maximum velocity is 700. But again, it takes a little while to get up to that speed. So what you want to do is start walking a little bit and jump. And you'll be instantly at 700. you notice at the end of the jump though, he slides and it slows down. You have to, you stop at the end of your slide, you have to accelerate back up again. So basically the way that you avoid that is start jumping, keep jumping, and you'll just stay at 700 velocity. When you turn around, you want to jump, because if you turn around, you get that extra bit of acceleration that you need to do. So you turn around and you jump and you're basically there. So jump when you're starting, jump when you're turning around, keep jumping once you start jumping and the rolls are just roll, jump, flutter, cancel even on the ground if you can. Uh, to get out of challenge truck quickly, um, usually you have to wait for this little animation. But to get out of it you can just jump and peck somewhere during the jump. What you could do is you could jump and slide, press B during the slide and it'll sort of be like a peck, except since you're on the ground that peck is instantly cancelled. So probably the best way to get out of it is jump, slide, and press B during sliding. You don't need to get out of it too often, but yeah, it's needed for grabbing jigs and stuff.
Alright, so that's all for movement. Uh, next I need to talk about FFM. FFM is a glitch. It's considered New Game Plus. And it basically lets you take all your moves over from... from a chosen file into a new file. So I've got a file here. And I've got a few moves on it. So I've got Talon Trap, all the Spiral Mountain stuff, Ground Pound. And I can't really show you in this room, I've got Wading Boots, I've got Beak Bomb, not flying though. I've got Speed Shoes. So I've actually got everything except for flying and gold feathers, except for red feathers and gold feathers basically, those moves. I've actually got eggs. Um, a lot of routes don't get eggs in FFM. The reason you skip some moves is not because you can't take them over, it's actually because you want the reveals from bottles. So, um, when I learn Red Feathers, he'll give me 25 of those, which is good, but if I already know them, he's not going to give me that refill. So that's why I don't learn Red Feathers, the same for Gold Feathers. Um, I learn eggs because it saves a bit of backtracking, and there's not many eggs in this route, so I find that I don't need the refill. So yeah, World Record gets eggs, but I think my way through it's faster. So if you want to not learn eggs, you can watch that video and look at the route, but I'll show you the one that I do. Um, I'm using a program called ScriptHawk. It runs on an emulator, BizHawk, um, which is kind of a tazzing science emulator, but you can use it for running. That's what I'm using today. Uh, ScriptHawk gives you all these watches, uh, velocity and XYZ, all that stuff, movement type. And it's got a lot of other features too. I won't be using much of many of those features today, but it has like moon jump, stuff like that, um, clip testing, and instant warp to places. I'll put a link in the description, it's pretty useful, especially for glitch hunting and stuff. I like using it for that. Yeah, it has instant warp as well, so I'm just going to go straight to Furnace Fun. Normally, you won't be able to do this, so in your FFM file, you want to skip red feathers gold feathers if you're doing my route get everything else and basically get at least 765 notes so you can get to furnace fun it's pretty hard don't underestimate it so grab all the jiggies you can because it's really hard to get enough jiggies without those moves but um yeah personally i like to get 810 notes in my furnace fun file because i use it for dora grunty skip uh, yeah, I'd also recommend you watch a few runs of this before you start running it so you know sort of what's going on. I'm just going to assume that you know what most of the tricks are, but I will explain them briefly. Alright. Um, in terms of practice on this game, you can practice on real cart, and I'd recommend that you practice on console at least. Um, what I like to do is I have a flash cart, and you don't need to... Well, you have the choice whether or not to save on the flash cart. If you reset the console, it saves. If you power off, it doesn't save. So what I do is I have a level a file before each level. And I just power it off once I've done practicing that level. And then it won't save and that file will still be just before that level. So I can use that to practice levels by themselves without having to get up to them each time. Which is pretty useful. Uh, another thing is if you have like an action replay or something, probably an action replay if you're in a power region, Game Shark might be more familiar to Americans. But um, yeah, if you have one of those, I'm going to put up a document full of useful codes. There's a few really good ones, like walk to the 810 room to practice Door of Grunty Clips straight away without walking there for three minutes. Stuff like that. So it's good. Also, you can practice on an emulator, but I find it's a little bit different on an emulator. But there's nothing wrong with that. I practiced FPL on emulator and stuff like that. Alright, so that's practice. Yeah, don't probably don't run on a flash cart, especially if you're running the power ROM on an NTSC console. Don't do that. Um, NTSC runs slightly faster than power, so no RBA and 100%. Um, those categories run slightly faster. So another thing is don't go and compare your individual level times to... Uh, don't go and compare your individual level times from any percent to times from 100% and no RBA because they will be a little bit faster so keep that in mind it's a shame that it runs like that because not many games are run on power but the reason this category is run on power is because it has a power only glitch 
So yeah, just if you have a flash cart, make sure you have a power console running the power room. You probably don't use a flash cart though. Just because it has an oscillator in it and that oscillator can run a little bit too fast if you're running on a non-native console. Alright, so furnace FFM. We take the moves from this file onto another one. Basically the way to do that is get game over in a minigame in Furnace Fun. So what you want to do is... Sorry, I left that mean jump on. What you want to do is just lose three lives here and then um, just have all you want and then you want to make your way to the minigame. There's like a tile skip that some people go for here. So what you can do is, it's just a little bit of play around why you have to lose all your lives anyway. So you can roll, jump, flutter, and try and ground count. I'll link a video. It's kind of cool if you get it. And it would save time, but it's really inconsistent. So I don't think anybody goes for it and runs. But you have to lose all your lives anyway, so you might as well practice it. I've got about three times in the time that I've been running. Yeah. So what you end up doing is you like flutter under the square and you um, kind of do a ground pound. And you notice in the ground pound it goes up a bit at the start, like that. Yeah. So that's what you do under that square. All right. So I got zero lives. I'm just gonna go. I'm actually in German at the moment. Uh, don't go in German if you don't want to. It saves 1.6 seconds. You do get to do Furnace Fun at the end of the game in English. But, um... You know, I just do German at the start because it saves time. It's just a little bit annoying setting up this, but you do get used to it. Um, since the Grunty questions are randomized, I actually, um... Know all my German answers from my FFM file. Or most of them, at least. So it's actually almost a little bit easier because I don't get confused when I do runs and they have different English answers because I'm only used to the German ones. Alright, so I'm up to this square now. What I want to do is get game over in this mini game to do the glitch. Uh, this is one of the mini games you can't die in, so you'd have to wait this out normally. But I'm just going to try and get a different one. Alright, cool. This is one that you can die in. And it's probably a good one to illustrate. You can't die in Mr. Vile, and you can't die in the Sandcastle mini game. You can die in this one, the Memory mini game, the Beehive, and Boombox. I'm pretty sure those are all the mini games. I could be missing one or two, but yeah, Mr. Vile and the Sandcastle you can't die in. Alright, and that sets up the glitch. Keep in mind none of this is timed, and you have to do this every run, but the timer doesn't start till you select the file. Uh, who's managed to get past these? Uh, a little note with the demo, you can actually hold start from about here and then skip the demo, you don't actually have to mash start. So I play on file 1, I'd also recommend you do that just because there's a reset in this run and after you reset it's slightly slower to scroll over to a different file than it is to just click file 1. So what I do is I have my FFM on file 3 and my um, game on file 1. It doesn't matter if you have your FFM on 2 or 3, it doesn't matter where the files are, it's just file 1's quickest for runs and you have FFM on one of the other ones really. Um, I like to look at a different file and then just come back. Uh, I, I don't think you need to do that now that FFM's in, but I just do it to be safe. So yeah, that just makes sure you can skip the cutscene when you first enter the lair. Alright, so timer starts when you click A here. I'm going to mash start to get rid of this cutscene. I would recommend not mashing until you know that you need to start mashing. Don't mash early, otherwise you'll just wear yourself out. No moves yet, so we just walk to bottles. Try and jump as far as you can out here. Just don't jump into the molehill, otherwise like you'll hit him and he'll bounce you back anyway. Alright, so L, R, B. If you press those together, they'll skip text. Some text you can just skip with B. 
but I don't. I always just LRB to be safe, really. So LRB just skip this whole day. Then just press B here, then LRB. Um, that little bit of text from bottles, that's basically the main reason I play in German. So that little text where he says, press A to, I don't know, press, press A for me to teach you moves, or press B if you think you're already good enough. That little bit of text in German is actually one second faster. Also, I talked to Brentilda in German, which is 0 0.6 seconds faster. So German does say 1.6 seconds overall. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. It's not required. It just saves that little bit of time. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with the rolls is uh, you'll see Banjo, when he rolls, his feet kind of go over his head and then come back down. So when they come back down to under him, that's when he starts to lose speed. You can see it there. So I'll slow it down. Um, now you want to jump when his feet are just coming under him. So try and like do your rolls as long as possible to make the most of that roll speed. So you don't want to jump until right at the end of the roll when his feet are coming down. So anyway, we just roll, jump, flutter. Notice all the flutter cancels that I was doing there. And we just high jump up here. And then keep rolling. And here's the first real trick of the run. Um, you want to high jump up to this point. Don't go too far in. You'll notice I missed it because I was trying not to go too far in. If you go too far in, then this happens, and this is what we're trying to skip. We skip this cutscene with this trick. So you want to get to this corner, kind of hold the direction a little bit before, and then press jump. If you jump before you hold the direction, you won't have enough velocity to make the jump. So, yeah. Another little thing about rolling is, if you roll, you can high jump out of it, and you'll get a bit of extra distance. So I'll show you from this point. I think about here will work. If I roll normally, I won't make it into the warp. But if I roll and high jump, I do. Mash start to get past this. Yeah, so high jump if you need a bit of extra distance. There's a few spots where I plan to do it in the run. That's one of them. Um, there's one or two more. Just run this jiggy. And then we do our last bit of roll movement before we get Talon Shot. You notice I said that you take the moves over, but I'm not in Talon Shot at the moment. That's because we don't get the moves until we um, enter exit the level. Just one thing I'll show off is you can actually get the moves by exiting Grunty's Lair and coming back in. But that's actually slower. So we don't use that in any percent. But you could get the moves here. Well, you get the moves when we enter Mumbo's Mountain. So anyway, we're doing more roll fluttering. Alright, LRB here. A to do the puzzle piece and another LRB. I don't think you actually have to skip this text, but I always do just in case it causes lag or something. Good time for Spiral Mountain is like a 58-ish. I think 57 is the best time on power. But yeah. So you'll notice I have talent right now that I've entered Mumbo's. Um, now I'm right into that jump movement. So straight away I keep jumping to avoid that slow down with the slide. Anyway, um, you can make this jump up to this Jinjo in Talon Trot. You just jump at it and hold up. You won't get it every time, but it's pretty consistent. Get the Mumbo token. And start down these notes. So I apologize if my movement's a little bit different. Um, sometimes this is different on emulator. So I might be a bit bad. Uh, you can grab this Jiggy. This is the only one you're allowed to grab in Talon Trap. And something very bad happened there. I fell off and when this text box goes, I'm gonna slide. And there's nothing I can really do about it. It's like I down here in Talon Trap. Now that's bad, you want to try and jump into the Jiggy. I peck out of it personally, and 
you'll get used to why it goes back. I just don't understand. Like, you'll get used to how it goes back. I don't understand why it goes back there. But I'm kind of glad that that happened so I could show that it can happen. If that happens, you'll only lose five seconds. So when you're starting out, it's not really a super big deal. Alright. So this is why my route starts to differ from the world record route. Uh, I get these notes. And I want to grab these five eggs because I need to do juju while I'm up here. And you need four eggs for juju. I grab the fifth one just to be safe. Um, notice there I did the peck out of talent trot. So that's a quick cancel. Otherwise I'll have to wait for that animation. Alright, so... When you come out of this eye, you want to try and walk off it and talent trot at the same time, like that. So that just skips getting into the animation. And then you want to jump straight into that door. Remember to jump to get that full velocity instantly. You want to avoid this middle bit here, otherwise you'll trigger mumbo and text. So you want to weave in between these poles. You can go inside the poles at the edge, there's a bit of room there. So don't be afraid to do that, but you don't want to go inside this pole with the five on him can make it, it's just like really hard. Anyway, so you weave inside. I think I saved the latest stain. Yeah, I did. Cool. Yeah, weave inside those. A good time for exiting mumbos is sub three, but keep in mind that's a really good time. So you won't be getting that too, you're pulling off really good times. Alright, so with these huts, on some of them, the ones that I don't come to in Talent Trot, I jump and ground pound on the same jump. That just skips a little extra jump there. You can probably do it there too, it's a bit harder on that one. I do it on this one. Oh. Sorry about that. Alright. There's actually a Jiggy Jig skip you can do here. Um, if these guys are close enough, I'll show you. Um, you wouldn't bother doing it at this point. I'm just going to bring this one over to show you what it is. Usually they're a bit closer. It's hard. Again, this is something that I get really excited if I get to, so don't expect to get this every time. There you go, that's it. That's the jig skip. So what happens is you grab the jiggy and you hit that guy on the same frame. So it's a bit hard because it's practically frame perfect. You can't just do them one after the other, it doesn't work. So if you grab the jiggy first and then hit him, it doesn't work. If you do it the other way around, it doesn't work. So it has to be the same frame. It skips a four and a half second dance. If you want to do Juju here, just be really careful about your eggs. Be cautious, if anything. Because you have to reset if you run out of eggs here. I look at like, this wall. That seems to reduce lag. Sometimes you can't grab the Jiggy. Also, I jump at the Jiggy. I should have Talent it there. Alright, here's Ticker. And I need to talk about the slope timer in here. So, I'll bring up them watches again. Yeah, script talk comes with these watches. They automatically display, which is nice. Alright, so we want to look at slope timer here. There's zero at the moment. Um, it's basically a timer when you're over a slope. You don't have to be on the slope, over a slope. Then it ticks up. So I'll try and demonstrate. It'll start ticking up this watch here before I land on the slope. See that? And now it's one. So what that means is, if I was out of town shot, I'd slip off. If it's not one yet, I don't slip off till it is one. Or I think it's close to one, it might be a little bit lower than that. So the timing is roughly a second. So... You can't just stay in town shot the whole time, because even on this one, even if you are in town shot, you slip off if it gets to one. So what you want to do is you want to kind of make use of this knowledge to land on that platform kind of just as you're passing over it and 
make sure you're on it when the slope time is not quite one yet. Another little note is when you shadows over the ground, that slope timer will reset. See, it goes to zero when I'm over the ground. So it's basically where your shadow is. If your shadow is on a slope, it goes up. And if it's not, it goes down. I think water resets it too. I could be wrong about that. Alright, so basically I like to jump out in front of these platforms. And that was... So the issue that I did there is I jumped into the platform too soon. So I was over the platform for too long before I landed on it. And the slope timer had already ticked up to one. So you can do this in Talon Trot or you can do this rolling and fluttering. I'll do it in Talon Trot and I'll actually show you both. So you kind of want to jump out in front of those platforms and then pull in at the last second. I'll see if I can show you rolling and fluttering. I'll peck out a Talon Trot. I find Talon Trotting more consistent, but I think rolling and fluttering is technically easier. With this one, I actually like to Talon Trot all the way up and I roll and flutter on the last one. You can see my shadow was over that slope for like ages before I landed on it. So that slope timer would have been one there too. So you really want to try and be out from the slope and then come in at the last second. Like that. So I usually roll on that last one. I find it more consistent. You don't have to. The quickest way is to do everything in Talon Trot. There's slower ways to roll. Apparently it's more consistent. I find talent trotting more consistent. Uh, this last slope doesn't slip as well, so you don't need to worry about it. And I did a two talent trot jump up that last bit. You can also just talent trot and roll. I think this is the wrong floor to show that. Anyway, you can just talent trot and roll if you want, or you can just roll both of them. I think that's like a high jump roll thing, but I actually wouldn't recommend that. Because if you high jump, it's really easy to build that slope timer before you get on there. Another little note about rolling is when you're rolling, even if the slope timer is one, you don't slip till the end of your roll. So you can jump out of it at any time. Yeah, you can jump out of it at any time. So yeah, don't be afraid to be rolling. Actually, interestingly, the slope timer doesn't even tick up here. So I reckon I would actually be able to just stand on it normally. <laughs> Anyway, that's just a side note. Uh, if you're in Talent Trot here, great. If not, I'm going to show off a little trick you can do when you go through a loading zone you're not in Talent Trot. This is mainly for after note doors. So, you can actually get into Talent Trot the same frame you go through a loading zone. That wasn't it. No, it was that. It's hard, as you can imagine. That's sort of it. I think that was a little bit of a slow one. Yeah, it's kind of hard to pull off, but you might as well go for it in some spots. Some some places it's not really worth it. That's a better one. That was a bit quicker. Uh, you don't want to be in Talon Trot when you grab Jiggies. You don't want to be in Talon Trot when you grab Jiggies. I'll explain that on the next one. I'll show you what happens. But yeah... In general, don't be on Talon Trot when you grab Jiggies. There's one or two that you can get away with. Uh, grab eggs here because we tied on eggs in this route. And also grab the eggs in Ticker. And I think technically you can skip one bunch of those, but it's good to just be safe. Alright, so I'll show you what happens if you grab the Jiggy in Talon Trot. You do a little flutter before Kazooie gets out of Talon Trot. I'll show you again. If, you if you're not, it's a lot quicker. So straight into that jiggy jig. Um, so what I'd do is I'd come here in Talon Trot and I'd just peck at the last minute. And that gets you out of it. And you want to do that for every jiggy. So for the very first one and Napper and Mad Monster Mansion. Those are the two that you can get away with. But I'll mention Napper as it comes to it. The first one you get away with just because of the text. You don't need the Mumbo token behind there. You should get four Mumbo tokens in Mumbo's Mountain. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on my note route 3 here, but I think it's pretty good. My route differs from Old Record because I um, I did Juju earlier. Usually you have to come back and do Juju after. So yeah, that just saves a bit of a detour. Um, it could be faster, I'm pretty sure it's faster. 
So, now we have Conga. If he's banging his chest, he won't throw an orange right away. So he's banging his chest there, and see how long it took him to throw that orange. Usually it's a lot quicker like that. If you can, you want to jump to that second platform before um, he throws his second orange. So you want to get those two platforms in two oranges, basically. Um, so you grab the orange for Chimpy, we leave that last platform. Yeah, there's like kind of an imaginary line you got to think about across here, where Banjo will start to pick up the orange. We don't want that because you can see how slow he moves. We can't do any talent shorting or anything in it. <laughs> yeah, you can't do any talent shorting in it. So, um, what I like to do is once I grab the orange, just flutter off this tree, roll at this bit, jump and flutter to Chimpy. You want to end up right next to him, preferably on his left hand side where I am, um, so that you're right next to the jiggy and you grab it in this cutscene. That's a little bit of a skip thing. Don't worry too much if you don't get it. Also, I think if you jump, if you like, for now, stay there. If you land here, um, and he'll start the cutscene, you're giving him the orange. You can sometimes pull off a little jump there by mashing A. So you can make that extra distance. It's a little bit hard though. Um, yeah, so try and get next to that jiggy. Don't be on his right side. Otherwise, when he runs away, he will push you out of the way. Alright, so grab a couple of eggs up here. I usually grab these four. I'm just going to wait for the camera to flip around a bit. And with Conga, we want to get out of Talon Shot, fire an egg straight away. Cancel his text, cancel again, fire an egg. Don't get hit. Do not get hit at all. Alright, so the timing there was, you fire the first egg, then you want to cancel two lots of text, then just before he throws the orange, like, you actually want to be firing the egg a tiny little bit after he throws the orange, and that'll hit him. If you, th if you fire that second egg too early, it doesn't work. Let's see if I can do it. See, that just hit him and it didn't work, so his hit detection can be really bad. You can just fire another one and it will though, hopefully, if I hit him. Yeah, so that's it. Then he throws one more, and you tell him shot and you jump over that platform. So just be really careful with his hit detection. Cancel as much text as you can, and just take your time with it when you're starting out. Uh, you'll get this mumbo taken here, then you want to kind of aim uh, like from this way, and try and hit Conga. Might have got it, might not. You don't need three eggs, but you're hoping one of them will get him. There we go. Took a little while. So another strap for this is you could just look, get him in the middle of the camera, fire, yeah, and then he won. And it'll hit him. I use that a lot up to very recently. So yeah, it's not a bad strap. It's just a little bit slow. Or you could just wait on the platform and shoot him. You don't have to shoot him from that Mumbo Token platform. You just stand there to grab the jiggy. I might actually show that again because I missed the jiggy. So you can grab that jiggy in the same thing. There we go. Uh, I think if you kill an enemy, it actually alters the direction that jiggy goes. You can actually get them to overlap with the conga jiggy and you can grab them in one cutscene. Uh, that's a little bit... Crazy. <laughs> like, it's hard. I just 
get that jig skip with the cutscene there. Alright, so we want to grab this ginger, but when the jiggy spawns, we want to kind of jump into the water. It's hard. So yeah, that's what you want to do. Now I notice he's still holding the jiggy. He can actually swim and be holding the jiggy at the same time. It's kind of cool to do that for a little bit of play around, but you should jump and just hit the water. You could hold the jiggy for the swim, but once you surface, there's no real good time to jump and hit the water again. So I don't do it. You could just jump here, but yeah. You just make sure you jump and go back into the water. Otherwise, when you go on land again, it'll do the whole thing. And you heard how long that music played out for, that's the amount of time that you skip. It's about 8 seconds, maybe even 9. Anyway, another slope timer thing here, just quickly jump on there. Don't do that. Yeah, so that's another slope timer thing. Another way to get up, which is kind of cool, is you could just do that in ground pound, but that's not as quick. That ground pound is the same sort of thing as the tile skip in furnace one. Alright, so that's Mumbo's done. And in Mumbo's you should have 10 G's and 100 notes. We don't need the witch switch in Mumbo's and a note is we don't need any honeycombs in this route either. So we did this whole run on 5 health which is very scary. Alright, so that's Mumbo's done. Now, I'll be talking to Brentilda in just a second, and that's in German, so I'll show you what I do to translate that. I don't know German, I just play in German because it's faster. Uh, similar to the Jiggy Jig thing with the flutter, you want to peck out of Talon Shrop when you go through a note, uh, when you open a note door. Also, don't worry about jumping around bottles here. Um, usually, he triggers a cutscene, but FFM, when you do that, it actually sets a flag that says you've seen that cutscene. So you'll be fine, you don't need to worry about jumping around him or anything. Alright, so I roll into this door. Then you roll to the left, you want to cancel the text with LRB when you're rolling. It's a little bit of tricky movement. You talk to her once, LRB once, hold, uh, press B again, hold A, you'll hear the first answer. Let him ask shout. Motor roll. Then Martin. Then she'll restore your health, so you want to LRB that, you can't just be that. Alright, so... Those are the exact same answers I got in my first take of this. Now this is a Furnace Fun Calculator, I won't go too much into detail on this, because there's already a tutorial on speedrun.com. But, um, it's useful. It Grunty questions are randomised, so basically it has an algorithm where if you give it some right answers, it'll narrow down which set of answers it could be. Um, there's 256 possible patterns, and you can see by entering those three answers that are correct, I got it down to eight possible patterns. It highlights the most likely one in blue. If it's definitely right, it puts it in green. If it's definitely wrong, it puts it in red. So even though I don't know anything about this question, I know that it's not rat sorbet. Um, I do it in German, so I keep this document open when I do runs. I got the answers, Fledermeshout, Motorol, and Demalton. And I line those up on the calculator and just type them in. I've also got what they actually are as well, but I don't use that. I just keep them in the same lineup. Uh, this Brent Tilda will always give you the first three answers. The one near the Click Club Wood Puzzle, I think, will give you the next three and so on in order of layer progression. I haven't been to every single one, so I can't tell you if that's exactly how it goes or not, but it's roughly how it goes. So, um,. Yeah, the brand tools will always give you the same set of answers, so you don't need to worry about finding these each time. We only talk to one in the run, just to narrow it down a little bit. Eliminate some of that RNG. Although, you can still lose a run to it, like my 122. <laughs> anyway. A here, LRB, A again. Uh, in this cutscene is usually when I would enter the answers into this calculator. Another thing you can do is like search for a question, so if I typed in roof, what's hanging from my bedroom roof, it would highlight an answer. But we'll get to that when we do it. I'll just show that off during the cutscene. Good time for here is around 8 minutes I think? No, maybe... 
Yeah, it's around 8 minutes when you open TTC and get back into the lair. Uh, from now on, we can press Z to open, like, do all the pieces in the puzzle. Now that that last bit of bottles text came up. Also notice I'm jumping as soon as I get into the room, so I'm instantly at that high velocity. We don't high jump into TTC, you just jump on these things. Try not to let it drop your input, it's kind of annoying in this part. Now I think it's quicker to hit the edge of that rim and press B to cancel your talent shot and do all that, but I don't like it. I don't do it. Alright, so what you want to do here is just walk to this note, get in talent shot, jump. Oh, uh, you can jump there. You want to jump here and cancel. Uh, you don't have to do this strat that I'm about to do, but I like it. Uh, um, I always like to have more clips and glitches in the run, even if they're more inconsistent for me. Because I think they're cool. Anyway. Uh, so you want to jump at this back of this pier and get hooked on. And you'll start building your velocity up. Uh, which we'll go into more detail later when we do clips. Now, I did a first take of this, and this trick is kind of hard on emulators. So I apologise if I don't get it. You watch my PB and it's, I reckon it'll be in there, unless I miss it. I think I might have missed it, but you'll see the hook anyway. So you hook on there. And hopefully you go long enough to grab the ginger. Again, this is really different on emulator, so I apologise if I can't get it. You kind of want to hold the A button for a little bit so that you get hooked on there. Because if you hold for longer, you flutter for longer. Anyway, so basically because you're hooked on there, your velocity is building and you get low enough to hit the ginger. But yeah, this is a lot harder on emulators, so I apologise if I can't get it. The other strategy is you just talent trot off. Don't worry about turning around here, just press B. Because Banjo is facing backwards in talent trot, when he gets out of it, he'll be facing backwards. Anyway, so you just want that ginger. Yeah, that trick's a lot better on console though. Take your time with those notes, they're really hard. Just need two eggs in Leaky, don't fire more than that because we think all the eggs we can get in this route. Alright, um, jump off the top corner here, around there. You want to jump off that and kind of take a straight line to the sandcastle. It doesn't matter if you jump off here, but you'll land on like one of the pillars and it kind of puts you in, a, in the middle for getting the notes, which means you have to go out to each edge. It's a slightly quicker way. You want to jump off the corner, take a straight line, and you'll land on that note, and you'll kind of slide to that note, and you can get them in that pattern. I find that a lot quicker. I don't know the actual minute. I think it's 9 minutes, but I aim for like a 9.45 out of here. It might be 10.45 or 8.45 or something. That's on the total run time. It's good to have little um, notes for how long you should be going on your splits during the run. I have a lot of them in the early game. Uh, there's two ways to get this Mambo token. So, uh, not like that. You can ground pound and get it in your recoil, or you can jump up high enough and then kind of flutter away. I think technically it's quicker to flutter, but in the world record he does leaky skip and, you know, um, gets it while he's waiting for the cutscene. So it's probably quicker there because he doesn't have to travel as far after the shock spring pad, so you just ground pound, but I reckon fluttering out's quicker in my route through here. Anyway, with these two notes, I think the general accepted strat is to get them like this, um, and then jump after that last one, avoid you slide. Honestly, I don't think that's the quickest way. Um, I reckon because you want to jump when you're turning around, this is what I'll get them like. Jump when you're turning around there and get them like that. I think that old, that normal strat for getting those comes from when it was thought that the slide made you go faster rather than the jump not making you not have to accelerate. So it used to be thought that the slide actually made you go faster, but that's not the case. So I think that is a little bit left over from when people thought that. I could be wrong there, but with how I know that the engine works, I'm pretty sure that my way's faster. 
Uh, hopefully you can get in there without having to click dive as well. If you do, you don't worry about it. Hold R when you're swimming and flying as well. Always hold R. It lets you turn sharper. I like to surface right at the end of my second paddle there, just because it's a little bit slower to go underwater than it is to go on the surface. And we learn our first move. So bubbles will give you two text boxes here. You can be a third one if you're low on health. So the first text box is learn the move, the second one is to say you've learned all the moves in the course, the third one is to give you health if you're low on health. So yeah, um, just watch out for that, be aware that it's not always the same. Um, you jump off this pole after you get the mumbo token and make sure that you actually fall a bit and flutter before you ground pound. If you just ground pound straight away, you'll take full damage. So yeah, we want to flutter a bit and then ground pound. And ground pound on this bit to open it. Anyway, so try and talent trot off the edge here, if you can. Then we do our first quick dive. So the way quick dives work is talent trot in uh, the talent drop animation actually interrupts the fact that you're entering the water, so you dive really far. Um, it's kind of hard to do it without doing the setup. So the way you do this one is you fall in, and then once you get in, you want to wait for a little bit and then slide off the box. And then just let go of everything once you slide off the box. So. Yeah, all your joystick and all your buttons, just let go of absolutely everything and you should dive down really far. Um, if you're not getting it, the thing that I found with this quick dive is you have to wait for a little bit after you enter the room to start holding your direction to slide off the box. So yeah, that can be the issue sometimes. With Blubber, he, um, you can kind of get a cutscene skip thing. If you stand right over where the Jiggy spawns, you should um, grab the Jiggy in the cutscene. Um, it's, I'm not sure if it's cyclic or RNG, but it's useful either way. So if you can't get it, do. Don't, like, watch where he is and see if you can stand there. Don't waste a bunch of time trying to get it if you're not going to be. Alright, so now we get the lockup G. The world record gets a note here. Don't do that. That's a route change, so we don't do that anymore. I'm going to kind of turn around here. Hopefully you get it. I'm really bad at it. So lockups, I'll go into a bit more detail later, but when you're looking at them, they, st well, they do their cycle. When you're not, they don't. So I face a little bit away from it. Make sure you hold up to go down and use a feather. You have to use a feather and then kind of turn into it. Dive into there and try and fly as soon as you grab the jiggy. Since you're flying, you won't get that jiggy cutscene. And you want a big bomb out, use a few feathers. Now if you don't get that lockup skip, don't worry about it. I don't get it that often. Um, it was kind of fluky there. If you don't get it, what you want to do is grab the jiggy, then kind of flutter down from lockup, go back to the ship and take the fly pad and then just keep going with the way that I'm going here. So yeah, it's not that big a deal if you miss it. It's probably like 10 seconds or something. But try and at least get the cutscene skip even if you don't stay in flying after it. So you want to at least do that. Anyway, so I just beak bombed up here. A lot of people get the gingers up here, but I did time that and it's actually slower to get them on the way up. I get them on the way down. So I'd recommend you do that too. So I beak bombed up here. Just a little note about the beak bomb. It's actually the center of your camera that it goes to rather than the way Banjo is facing. So don't try and just like hold down on the joystick to face up and then beak bomb. You'll just go forward even though Banjo is facing right up. All right. Um, so we want to grab the G on top of this lighthouse and try and grab it in flying so you get the cutscene skip. It's a little bit hard. I'm not very good at getting it after the lockup, after I've got the lockup jiggy thing because I don't often get the lockup jiggy thing so I'm not used to it. I'll see what I can do there. I will get it. There we go. You don't need a ground pound, but it sometimes helps. Uh, you want to get these notes in walking. Um, roll to this last one, then jump out and see if you can peck the door. Um, I'll show you the peck properly. It's just in town truck. It's a lot harder to get that peck. It is possible, 
like that, but it's really, you fall to the ground a lot quicker and you, once you're about past, past around this point, it won't let you pack anymore. So it's a lot harder in Talon Trot, so don't do that in Talon Trot. It looks easier because I keep missing the roll, but I promise the roll is easier. Alright, so just don't worry about the witch switch. Witch switches in general are slower than they look. I did, I timed every G, so they are slower. And I'll actually link the document to my jiggy timings too. So you grab those gingers on the way down. You don't have to grab that pole under the green one. It just happens sometimes. Now next we want to grab three notes and flying. So fly, make sure you're facing forward when you fly too. You want to count five and a bit of flaps and then start holding up and your nose dive into the notes. As you can see it's a bit hard. You're on 63 when you finish that. Um, I'll show you another strat that you can do. It's a bit slower, but just get your height down here and then you want to pull that. This is kind of the safe strat. It's a little bit slower. I call it the safe strat and I miss it. You can actually pull back right from here. So pulling back in general is easier to get stuff in flying, but it's slower. I'm sure you can see how much faster it is. So once you get the bottom note, the 63rd one, you want to use two feathers. Don't just use one. Make sure you use two. And then you want to grab that jig in flying and land. Alright, so we're in this alcove. There's two ways you can get down. First way is you can grab these three feathers if you can. And you want to jump across to the pink ginger. Second way in the one that I use is you can jump right from the edge, kind of peck, and hopefully you land there. Um, it's a lot scarier, it looks a lot scarier than it actually is. See, I landed it there and that was not a great jump. You just want to make sure you jump right off the edge, um, right off the edge here. Just don't go over the edge because it can drop your input pretty badly. Yeah, you do need to do that peck to get the extra distance. So if you don't want to do that, just yeah, go down to that feather one. You get three extra feathers that way and you can just tell them to jump across. Alright, so now when you want to do this, this is my personal route through to get these notes. Just fly to get that one, tell them trot when you're on that one, jump around. This is a this is something that's harder on a GameCube stick. If I was a bit deeper in that water I wouldn't have taken damage there as well. That's something that's harder on a GameCube stick, that's why I slot to a first party, stuff like that. Alright, so, these lockups, I'll see if I can demonstrate it. So, I'll save a state, and I'll look around to it right away, and it's kind of opening and closing. I'll wait a bit. Yeah, it, it's not perfect, but the cycles kind of depend on when you look at them. Yeah, see, it's on the same point in the cycle when I look at it, so not looking at it almost freezes it a cycle, but it's not perfect. Sometimes it doesn't freeze it. There, so... Yeah, it's just about to close, and it doesn't seem to matter how late I look at it. But yeah, so they're not perfectly cycling, but when you're close to them and looking at them... Yeah, they're kind of weird. It does depend on when you're looking at them a little bit. Yeah, I think when you're close enough to them as well, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at them or not. Anyway, it's kind of weird, but just know that it's not 100% cyclic. Anyway, so I like to kind of look at it around here. And then it opens right there, and you can jump out in time. So I, it does depend when you turn your camera around. Um, the other way you could do it is you could look at it a lot later. Actually, that's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Alright, you can look at it a lot earlier. Jump in at the last minute. And then jump out. 
So there's kind of two ways to do that. What you don't want to do is hop in it kind of a little bit after it's opened and then like have to wait for it to close and open again. But it doesn't really matter. Alright, so I flick my camera around two clicks with C right here and that I have kind of a camera set up for these stairs. So I go here, flick it around twice, try and make that jump to the box. You don't want to jump from the corner, you want to jump from kind of the forward ledge bit. So kind of in the middle of the path you want to jump from. The corner doesn't quite make it. Flick my camera around once and it's usually set up pretty nicely for these stairs, but sometimes it's not. This isn't the best camera setup, but it is for the second stair. So you can just jump up it really nicely like that. You can usually make that lock up. Um, you can usually make that jump in and jump out before it closes again. Another quick dive here. So I like on quick dives apart from that one in the ship, I like to jump and slide and the sliding helps me get in there. So what I want to do is jump, slide, let go of everything and you should quick dive. Again, don't worry if you didn't get it, just swim. You need to press B when you quick dive as well, don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll paddle back to the top. Last fly of TTC. Um, so I do 8 flaps, but you can press A at pretty much any time. You want to just grab this Jinjo, is what you want to do. And then you want to kind of nose dive here, nose dive till you go a little bit under the roof and then let go. Now that was bad because I hit the ground, we don't want to do that. Wow, <laughs> it's the first time I've ever missed that. I guess you need to nose dive a little bit around just before the ginger. Now that was also bad because I missed the Jiggy. So what you want to be doing is just nose diving till you get a little bit under that alcove roof and then let go of the up direction. Basically once you pass it. And I stayed in flying there so that's good. I'll show it one more time. I'm sorry I'm not very consistent, I think it's emulator stuff. There we go. Yeah, so you keep holding up till you just pass slightly under the roof, then you let go. You don't want to let go before you go under the roof. A big bomb here and you just match B and you'll peck out of it. Hopefully you land on top of him, but if you don't, just high jump from the side. Just make sure you don't trigger his text, because that's very important. Yeah, so just remember, big bomb goes to the center of your camera, not the way Banjo is facing. So let your camera get aligned before you try and do the big bomb. All right. Um, so, Nippus Skip, what you want to do is talent, get in Talent Rock here and kind of walk off at full speed. Use B to skip the text. This is the only time I use just B to skip the text. Don't use LNR, it can mess up your camera. Jump in, pull back. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. B to skip the text, jump in, hold down just to like face Nippus basically. Wow. Um, yeah, so you jump inside him, hold down, like flick the down direction so you're facing him. And then um, you want to like jump and peck. So you jump into him and then you press B to peck. And then you want to jump peck, jump peck. It's not a mash to jump peck, it's actually a timing. So you'll get used to the timing. Um, when you're starting, you'll probably take 2 damage from him if you do a good one, and then you can actually get down to 1 damage from him. But make sure you have at least 3 health coming into him. It's You don't want to die at this point. TTC is hard, so it's not worth dying right at the end. There we go, so I took 1 health. And you can probably watch my button input to see the timing for that. The button input's just up here, see my AB. Yeah, so I think it's, yeah, all I can say is it's more of a timing for those pecs than it's a mash. You don't want to just be, you don't want to just be mashing like that because then you can bear punch and get your position changed and stuff. 
Alright, so you can do that talent shot through a loading zone thing here. Yeah, the loading zone is just a bit deceptive, is the only thing. Should have 100 notes in TTC, by the way. No, 99, I meant. Not 100. Um, you want to grab these eggs, just because we need eggs. You don't have to, if you've been really good with them. And then you want to get over these crabs and sort of grab this chiggy at the same time. Again, I'm sorry if I'm not very consistent. It is a little bit different to play this on emulator. But it's worth it to show with save states and stuff. Yeah, this Jiggy Jig skip's annoying. Just make sure that if you're going to do one, like if you're not going to get it, make sure that you at least grab the Jiggy and just don't get the skip. Don't, um, like, die. <laughs> that would be bad. Ah, that would have been the skip if I'd remembered to lose an extra health. These eggs sort of put the crabs in a weird position as well, so if you can, if you can don't get them. You get to know how many you need. Alright, so that's TTC. In my opinion, that's the hardest level in the run. So once you get a run past that, it's pretty good. The good thing about Sandcastle Percent is TTC is a lot easier because there's none of those flying jiggy grabs. So again, I'd really recommend that if you're starting out. Now this little pipe, you can actually talent trot right on the edge of this, so that's kind of a cool little time save we can do. Trigger this LRB and then you want to jump up this pipe. It's a lot harder than it looks. Um, if you can get in one jump, great. Don't get into talent trot because you just have to high jump here. Probably quicker to jump there, or you could roll through. Then you want to roll here. I don't get a talent drop for this section because you just have to ground pound here anyway, so you're going to have to get out of talent drop somehow. Good time entering clankers is sub minute, like 58 seconds ish. So aim for that. And Clankers is on a cycle, so I'm going to show you the tricks and then I'm going to do a run through of this first part. There's a little trick you can do where you jump around here. I wouldn't recommend trying it because Clankers is all on a cycle anyway, and with my route you can make the cycle. My route's a little bit different than the normal Gleep route, so if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I just find that it works for me better. Um, the thing that bothers me about the normal Gloop route for any percent is it's the same as the one as 100%, but in any percent you don't need to grab as much stuff, so I think that a better route could be worked out, honestly. But, um, yeah. Uh, this category does need a little bit of rerouting. That's why I did all the jiggy timings, which I will link. Anyway, so you can do this. It's a bit of a slope manipulation thing. You don't have to roll up there. You can do it in town Trot, but I find rolling up there is more consistent. Um, I guess I'll get the slope timer up for it. Uh, again, I wouldn't recommend doing it. It saves a little bit of time. You can probably grab a few extra notes before you go into Clanker's Bolt, which we'll see later. It's just, I don't think it's worth it. Especially since you're, if you fall, you basically miss the cycle. So you can be watching the slope timer there. Notice that it would have been one when I got up the top, so it wouldn't let me through. You can do it all in time trotting again, but it's hard. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to go on about that for ages because I don't even think it's a good idea, but. I thought I'd just show it off. It is a slope manipulation thing. Yeah, so the thing is you have to walk back to where you're going normally anyway, so it doesn't even save that much time. Right, so climb this pole, you want to hold R to keep the camera behind you here. Keep the camera behind you and sort of jump up here as straight as you can. That was a bad camera. Um, I'll do it more properly when I do the run through. But basically you want to jump straight as you can. If you jump on an angle you won't make this. If you hit the wall you won't make this. So that's why keeping the camera behind you is good. If you're trying to do it here it's kind of... It's hard to not be on an angle. 
So yeah, once you make it up the pole, hold R, get the camera behind you, and do the jump. Or you can just jump and peck. Uh, probably better to grab that gold feather that I missed, but you can get another one later. Yeah, so any percent doesn't need to grab this Jinjo here, or a Jinjo underwater, so I think that it could use a new glute wrap. Now what I'm going to do is run through it at full speed, and hopefully get the good cycle. I like to grab that feather just because it puts me in a good spot to jump down here. And it's an extra feather, so why not? It's hard to know where to jump from if you don't grab that feather. LRB, but you can just hold R and B and mash L there since you're already holding R and B to swim. It's another note, you can just hold B to swim, you don't need to tap it. Now this is where my route differs, I actually grab these notes first. So that scares a lot of people, but I find it better because it's hard to know how much air you're going to need to grab them on the way back up. Especially if you make a mistake while grabbing the notes, you could die from it. Alright, so this is the fastest route that I do through here. I swim down here. I want to swim left through the key. If I can swim through the key, imagine I did that. Actually, I will do that. Alright. So it's sort of a fast route and a slow route, and I decide which one to do based on how well I think I've done the level so far. Because everything's on a cycle from when you start the level. I apologize that I'm not getting this. Ugh. Maybe I'll try turning that way. Let's see if I can still make the cycle. Yeah, but anyway, you swim left through that key, grab the node underneath it, and then start grabbing these. Now this is why it's scary, because you have one air here, but you have so much time on that last bubble. It's really not a big deal. I grab these two from Gloop, and then I kind of go down and grab the rest of the notes. Um, now there's another one where you just grab this note here, I think. Yeah, it's this note first. You wouldn't come in from that far away from the note usually, but my save state was just closer to it. The dangerous thing about doing this is you could kind of mess it up if you're going too fast, but the bubbles on Gloop are a little bit better this way. I haven't, like, perfected this loop route yet, but I'm pretty happy with that, especially with those bubbles I got there. It's just that sometimes if you're too quick, gloop doesn't... Gloop can be weird if you're too quick sometimes. Right. Yeah, so... Just do the best you can. If you want to do the whole gloop key thing first, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that this is the way that I do it. I'll give you a time reference soon if you want to test whether your route's good. The clankers so far. There's a time reference when I grab the first jiggy. You can kind of roll up this seam here on clanker. Now you want to get into this bolt not in talent drop. So since I made that bolt, I knew that I'd had the good cycle. Even if you get in talent drop, um, you won't be in it when you come out of that cutscene, so don't worry about getting that or not. Try and grab the note because then you can do a jump. Peck out of here. If you're getting this jiggy around 355, that's the same bolt cycle that I get. Uh, so don't get into talent drop there. What you want to do is roll and do a high jump. Another one of them high jump height things. Uh, get off this fly pad, hold R so the camera's behind you, and then mash B. Mash B again, hold up so you peck. 
Now I've got the first and the only learn move in Talent Drop. So what you want to do is hold Z, kind of press C left and then quickly press B after it. And you should get it. Um, now when you're holding LRB to skip the text, don't hold L and R for too long. Because if you hold L and R, it'll actually cancel the Z. You can see my button inputs there. I'm holding Z, L and R, but it cancelled my Z. So... Yeah, let go of L and R as soon as you skip that second text box. You rarely ever um, have lost health at this point, so there's not usually three. The only place where you could have is that first ring with fans. So yeah, there'll be three if you've lost health, two if you haven't. So as soon as you see that second one, usually, then you want to skip. Um, that was a mistake. I should have pecked out of Talent Trot there. Alright, and you want to get up to 10 gold feathers here because gold feathers are important. Um... I just skipped over the explanation of this. If you stand right here, you never get hit by these blades, like along this seam. So you can go as slow as you want. What you want to do is just jut out quickly and grab the notes and then keep going along the seam. I got hit because it's a bit hard to stay in that exact spot, but yeah, that's what you do. So it looks harder than it is. Um, all this inside clunker stuff isn't on a cycle, so you can be as relaxed as you want in here. Still try and go fast though. Flick the camera around three turns, flutter there, and then jump. Don't do the flutter in the water if you're not getting it. If you're not getting it, just paddle there. Um, do it one more time. It's a little bit hard. So flick the camera around three times. I'll show you just the paddle. Just keep the camera consistent is the key to this trick. Ah. If you miss it a few times, probably shift the camera around to this angle. But as you can see, I'm not used to doing it on this angle, so I missed it there. Um, I don't think that's a slope time thing. I think you can actually stand there, but it's good to jump off quickly just in case you like move your joystick and slip off or something. Just try to try and not have to flutter to get up there because that can cause issues. Like, don't flutter to get up to this first jump part. It's a bit annoying. You can lose a bit of time on it at the start, but I promise it gets more consistent. Jump as far as you can then dive, because it's quicker to jump along in the air with Talent Trot than it is to swim. Alright, and from this point on we're on a cycle again. Well, actually, it's a pretty easy cycle to make. So you want to hold right and kind of go up to his mouth here. And then just ride this bold upwards. Uh, this cycle is the same when you exit Clanker, like it doesn't matter where it was before you came into Clanker, so you always get that unless you miss the mouth jump or something. With that mouth jump, what you kind of want to do is like just kind of sit above the mouth in the water and when you when you look like you're landing, well you look like you start walking on the mouth, it's good. Uh, that was a really good note path, grab the jiggy and come back and get the note. I'm not sure if I saved the state there. So with that mouth jump, I like to sit in the water and you notice he starts kind of walking up there, that's when he can jump off. I did, cool. Yeah, I got the best note path for that and then the back is up for these last three. So it's a really nice note, like a really nice back cycle to get the notes. Get as many feathers as you can there, but don't slow down too much for them. There's like a peck and a, um, a peck and then a flutter to get this jiggy after you hit the grate. Yeah, so it's pretty self-explanatory. There's no real trick to it. Make sure you grab that MT. Mumbo token, I should say. Another quick dive there, so that's just slide off the edge and then let go of absolutely everything. Now these snippets don't go in too far, otherwise they'll be scared of you, so around here is really good. Maybe not, because I didn't get them. You want to get them both in kind of one hit, if you can. Now I have a theory that you could actually use this honeycomb text to skip, um, to get this cutscene skip easier, that I'll show you, but I'm not 100% sure about it yet. You want to try and talent trot and get up there, and then you want to be on the jiggy platform when this text comes up. 
Um, I'm not very good at it, so I'm not going to show it off. But what you do is you poop three eggs at this snippet, then this snippet should come. You poop three eggs there, then you quickly talent shot and you like would go out there to get the jiggy. And if you're over the jiggy before the whole uh, you've defeated us text comes up, then um, then you should get the jiggy during the spawn cutscene for the jiggy. So it's a little bit quicker, but I've never gotten it wrong. I'm not very good at it. And watch like pretty much any category. I think every category gets that jiggy. So if you watch speed runs of it, then you'll know what skip I'm in. But again, if you're watching other categories, don't compare your power times to no RBA or 100%. That fin cycle was good. So we want to take two hits from that usually. But since I'd already lost one health, I only took one hit. Because it's possible that he takes two health per hit. So if I'd taken a second hit there, I could have died. So I just didn't get it, just to be safe. You want to be as low health as possible though, because we do a death walk. So you do want to take that hit. Don't try and avoid it. Um, now that was a little bit of a mistake there, when I jumped out of that pole. I'll show you what should have happened. Not that. I'll show you a little trick you can use to get up here. You can sort of peck. If the fin cycle is not good enough to get up, you can sort of peck in that corner. I'm not very good at it, so I don't try it, but you can do it. It seems to be hard on an emulator as well, actually. Anyway. So pretend I just got those five notes, and you'd be around here. Land on top of here, you want to roll off pretty instantly, just in case you mess with your joystick and you fall off instead of roll. So you're going to hold a little bit so you don't bear punch, roll. Jump reasonably early, otherwise you won't be able to jump, you'll just flutter, and then flutter. You can make it with a flutter, I think, but it's hard. Down shot here, you want to grab the MT. Mumbo token. And then flutter. So when you go into your falling animation with Talon Shrug, you actually can flutter once you're in your falling animation. So, um... Yeah, I'll show that again. Because I made a mistake, I probably shouldn't have Talon Shrugged on Clanker's head either. Alright, so... When I start falling, Banjo will go what oh and then do his whole voice thing. So when he makes that when he starts making that noise, you can actually flood it out of a talent truck with A. Usually you can't do that flip flap flutter thing out of a talent truck. So yeah, usually you can only peck, but that's a case where you can if you start that falling animation. Be really careful with eggs here, um, just because we're low on eggs. And um, be careful because if you kind of bob underneath his chin, it can put you underwater and it can be really annoying. You want to go for one of those talent trot off the ledge things like we did in Mumbo's Eye and Mumbo's Mountain. It's hard, harder here though. I don't often get it, but I will show it. There we go. So you want to get that. Should have 98 notes at the end of Clankers. And I don't know the jiggy count off my head, but I will show the totals. I think I forgot to show the totals of Treasure Trove. That's 99 notes and however many jiggies it was. Alright. Alright. Notice that I um, talent trotted and then kind of walked off and on the platform really quickly. That's just so I exit the level in Talon Trot. Alright, um... We know the totals for MMG. Uh, TTC is 99 and 8 Jiggies. The two Jiggies that you skip are the Sandcastle and the Xs. Don't get the Witchy Switch in either of those. You do get the Witch Switch in Clankers. So that's the totals for Clankers. 7 Jiggies. You would, you would skip Jinjos. You'd skip the Long Underwater Pipe. And you'd skip, um... The Rings as well. So those are the G's that you skip there. And I guess at this point you should have 15 Mumbo tokens. There's a few other checks you can do, but honestly I don't worry about checking anymore. Because there's a few extras you can get at the end. 
There's also a mumbo token above the pipe there that sand from stick link is, so I used to get that earlier on in the run just as an extra in case. Yep. I'm about to get a Jiggy that's not actually in the route. It is faster than, like, the Jiggy that I'm about to get takes 15 seconds, done perfectly. The Jiggy, the slowest Jiggy in the route is 18 seconds. So this Jiggy should be in the route. It's just, it's a really hard clip to get it. Um, I'll see what I can do there. Basically, there's a, you need a clip to get this Jiggy, but if you take more than three seconds to clip, it's not worth getting this Jiggy, and I definitely take more than three seconds to clip. So, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm sorry about this navigation. So basically what the clip is, now remember you don't have to get this in the route, but I'm just showing you, in case a good place that you could use it is if you miss a jiggy and you need an extra one to do the click clock wood puzzle, you can quickly walk up and do this one. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you got a really good time there, you just reset. Anyway, that was a good clip as well, like that was a really fast clip for that, so you can imagine you need it in under 3 seconds, so that's why. Now I'll have an extra Jiggy through the rest of the run. So when you're looking at your Jiggy totals, remember that I've got an extra one. I'll let you know when I do puzzles and stuff that I do have an extra total Jiggy. Alright, so you can do the Talent Trot and the Warp thing here and in the last note door. But I just tell him to drop earlier because the warp's so far away it wouldn't actually save that much time and it's hard to hit, so I don't think it's worth it. You can do it if you want though. I think the Taz does some jump roll talent drop thing, but <laughs> I don't think that's very doable RTA. Then we have this MT, you need 16 at this point. Uh, sorry about this movement here. Alright, uh, here's an awful glitch. Alright, this is the first major trick, major skip of the run. We're going to get into Free Easy Peak early. First of all, you need to um, get rid of this web. Another way you can do it is just to sit here and shoot eggs forward. Um, pooping eggs kind of looks fun. I'd kill this guy if you're yeah, new to it as well. I still do it sometimes. Um, yeah, just it's, it's best to kill him because he can get in the way. You do have to do this trick twice in the run, and he's in the way in the second time as well. There's nothing much you can do about that. Because you don't go past him on the way to do the trick on the second turn. Alright, so we're going to do FP early. Uh, you want to just walk into these running shoes. We have them because we did FFM. Actually, if we didn't do FFM, we wouldn't be able to get into FP early. Because you need Beat Bomb from FP to get into FP early. Alright. That is FP early. I will explain it, don't worry. I'm just going to show you what it is. There. Alright. Now. I just load the state. Now you want to peck forward and you want to peck on the ground before you fall down the little pit thing. So peck around here to cancel Talent Trot. Well, it's not really Talent Trot, it's Turbo Talent Trot. But anyway, peck there to cancel it. And then um, you want to just be flying. Um, another little note is if you if you did some janky movement and you don't have enough time, you can actually like pause and unpause and it will make the timing run slower. You can actually make this timer without the speed choose if you want to. Um, and it just works. So. Alright. Now I apologize if I spend too much time on this trick, but it's really important because it's a hard trick and this is going to be the only resource on the internet that I know of for this trick. Alright, um, 
except for videos of people doing it but the only commentated resource so we'll see this web on the back wall you want to kind of aim at that now you can where my mouse is you can get between around the middle of the web like where I am is the furthest facing left that I would usually be I don't often end up facing more left than that you can be around there between there and there where my feather is between the feather and the 20 you can end up facing that far to the right so you're in that range somewhere now what we want to do is turn to the right uh, some people turn to the left there's nothing wrong with that setup I just find right is easier for me so that's the way that I'm going to say to do it um, you want to turn to the right um, and you want to fly towards the door to Frizzy Peak I'll just show you that a little bit Um, I actually flew too far there, by the way. So, yeah, anyway. You want to turn to the right and fly towards this door. Then you want to be counting your flaps. So, I turn to the right, face the door. Then after seven flaps, hold R and turn to the right again. Um... This trick is a lot harder than it looks there, by the way. I still don't get it every time. So, once you've done seven flaps, you want to turn to the right. Now, the timing on that seven flap actually changes changes depending on like how far you are, where you're facing on this wall. So, if you think about it, if you're facing more left here, it's going to take you further... Like, it's going to take you longer to turn around and fly towards the door. So you actually need to fly towards the door for a bit longer. The reason you fly towards that door is to set up your camera angle for the beak bomb. So it's going to take you a little bit longer to turn around and face the door. So you need a little bit longer flying towards the door. So here, I would wait seven flaps and I would wait a little bit after the seventh flap to turn around. If I was facing... Like, I'll see if I can show you where I'd be facing. I was facing like, there's the same spot. I was, turn that consistent camera angle. It's because I saved a state right before. If I was facing like there, that is really extremely right. I probably wouldn't even do the seventh flat. I'd do it just before the seventh flat. Um, I'm not used to having it that far right, so obviously I didn't get it then. Alright, so that's the timing one to turn around. Now, I don't have an actual setup for when to start pulling back and pulling your nose up, which is what you do before the beak bomb. I'd say ninth flap, eight, nine, pull back. I would say that for a setup, but honestly, I do it by a few. Um, when I got hit there, I don't know the exact cause, I think that's something to do with camera angle, that I don't often get that where I get hit and fall down. Alright, um, now that example there was a little bit far forward on the slope. You can be that far back. So Banjo, I'm not sure if you notice, maybe you go back and have a look. The one I did just then was further back than the one before it. Now I further back, I mean like further to the right in this picture is what I mean by further back. So you can get hooked on the slope. Actually if I notice you can actually do this without flying, but I will show you that later. Um obviously without flying it's useless though, because you can't fly to SP. So, what you want to kind of do is get hooked on the slope around here, slide down it a little bit, and then press B. You don't want to press B as soon as you get hooked on the slope, because you won't have slid down too far enough. You actually, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about clips in general when we do some on foot, but my theory is, 
you actually need to be over a bit where you'd automatically go up like that. See how Banjo's going up onto the slope? Whereas if I walked into that wall, it would kind of push him to the left till he can go up. You can't just walk up here, but you can walk up there. So my theory is you need to be over a bit of the slope where you can walk up a bit. Anyway, um, so I'll go again. Seven flaps. Eight, nine, pullback. Now it's not a perfect pullback. You have to jiggle it around a little bit. So it's not perfect. Um, that's why I said if I had to give a setup, I'd say pull back after nine. But again, you might be able to see my input there. That was a miss, obviously. I was too far forward. I didn't pull back enough. Um, you can probably see my inputs. You're watching probably my Y and it's like changing a bunch. So it's not, is definitely not just pull it back at some point. There probably is a point like that, but you really need to be doing this by feel rather than relying on a count for the pulling back. I rely on a count still for the um, angle setup there. I apologize if you're already an expert at this trick and I'm spending a lot of time on it. It's just really important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Two, well, that was nine. Alright. So yeah, seven, then turn like turn to the right, face the door, seven, turn to the right around seven, it depends how where you're facing. If you're facing more left, then you wanna wait for longer to turn around from the door. So if you're facing more to the left here, you wanna wait longer before you turn around here basically with the nav hold R and hold left use four feathers and then fly up you can use another feather here but be really careful you don't go over the floor and then just go into FP so I'll just repeat that a few times I don't think I'll do any more FP early clips if you do still have trouble with this or any other of the anything then leave a comment so with the nav, I just clipped out one, two, three, four. That was bad. All right. Hold R and left. One, two, three, four. Big bump up. I used two feathers here, three because my big bump was way low for some reason. Yeah. Um, Bad thing is you have to do two of these. So you hold R and hold left. Make sure you let go of R when you start using your feathers. Um, so use four feathers and you want a big bum up. Again, this setup isn't set in stone. It's just what I use. So R and left, four feathers. Now that's bad. That's very bad. I didn't void out there. But if you go too, out of, too far out of bounds, you void out. Now that means you're out of the border of the level and it will send you back. You have to do that whole thing again, so do not go too far out of bounds. Um, I think if you clip, you don't hold left right away, you void out pretty quickly. Yeah. So, yeah. Clip, you want to hold R and left. Use four feathers. Make sure you're watching my button inputs as well to see when I stop holding R. It's pretty early. The R is just to make it go left a little bit. Now these big bombs that I'm getting are quite low, but it doesn't matter. All you want to make sure is don't big bomb too high. I'll show you too high. Probably that. Imagine I big bombed higher and then that happens and you can't do it. So yeah. Just when you're using these feathers, make sure that your camera has time to catch up. I think actually the quicker you use them, the higher your camera will go. Yeah, the quicker you use them, the higher your camera will go. So just be really careful. Use them as quickly as you can because you it's hard to go too high. 
I'll do one more and then that'll be it for FPO. Just be really careful you don't go back in bounds because you'll be so hyped when you get this trick and to go back in bounds is a real shame. I apologize if anyone was already an expert at that and I just spent like half an hour on it. Through here, don't hold the full range on your joystick just so you can get the notes. That's another thing that's hard on a GameCube stick. Alright. Um. So I do have a note count in here. I think 10 scratch sounds on that pole is when you can jump, although I haven't tried any less than that, I just know 10 is consistent, so I do. You want 21 notes when you come out of here, you can jump out in talent trot and not hit anything, you fall right down. So you want to do that. Grab that mumbo token, make sure you grab that. Now there's a quick strat for getting this jiggy. Um, you can beat bomb right into the pipe. And by this jiggy I mean the one inside that pipe there. In there. So you can actually beat bomb right into the pipe. It is possible. It's just really hard. I do want to show it off in this tutorial, just to show that it is possible. So you might have to bear with me for a sec. Again, you won't be expecting to get this in runs consistently. But the good thing is, you can actually go for it every run, and you don't waste any time by doing that. That could be it. Uh, if that was a bit lower, it would have been it. There we go. So then you need to use a little bit more feathers and you go there. Alright, so that's the quick strat. Don't expect to get that in the runs because it's really hard. But I did want to show that off. Alright, so what you what you normally end up doing is you do this, you go for the quick strat, you try and get it. And then you use one feather, maybe two feathers here, but I think I can get away with one. Then you hold back. You want to grab that jiggy. Um, that was a bit of an awkward camera angle, so I couldn't get that jiggy first try. Yeah, you want to use about one feather too if you're really low though. Just make sure you hear that jiggy sound. It's a lot easier to fly early than it is too late. But do, do be cautious about landing as well. Now there's two strats for this part, uh, there's an easy way and a hard way, so you can jump off and kind of peck and then jump and flutter around. Or you could stay in talent drop, 
jump, wait for his falling, and then flutter. Now you can see why that's a little bit dangerous and risky, but I do go for it in every run. It's not as bad as it looks, but the danger is you could flutter late. It's kind of hard to flutter too early, but it could happen. But if you flutter late, it just drops your input and won't let you flutter at all. So yeah, you just fall and die if that happens. I'd recommend the safe strategy starting, but the risky strat isn't as bad as it looks. There's a few other things you could do, like you could jump out fully and land on his nose or something. Um, make sure you get all the feathers and notes on there. There's a check shortly that we'll do for note counts. Um, I guess 57 you could use. You want to jump over here. This jump isn't as bad as it looks at all. So you want to jump over here and jump there. I'm pretty sure this slope... Wow, you can even walk on it. So don't even worry about missing that. I didn't know you could actually walk on this slope. Yeah, so don't worry about missing that. I used to peck there and get out of talent drop just to try and make the jump and it just wastes time. Alright, so you want these notes? You should have 65 at this point. That's the check that I use. Um, I don't ever miss them on the scarf, but if I did, this would be the place that I find out about it. It's probably better to do an earlier check there. It's just that I always remember this one because it's an even multiple of five around each foot. Well, not an even multiple of five. <laughs> if you want to be technical. Um, notice how close my joystick range is to not... Um, not being full, like it was at 66 there, uh, that was really close. Um, so you notice I got health on top of the snowman, and here's another spot that you can do that if you need more health. Um, I don't know why I do the snowman, it's just muscle memory. But yeah, you can get health here, it probably is quicker to get it here. You need 5 health though, make sure you have 5 health at this point. Because you absolutely need 5. I'm going to grab this note. Ground pounding is sort of quicker. It's just um, more consistent that you don't get hurt in the water when you ground pound. So I'm going to grab all those notes and then um, come out. There's two strats for health. Well, sort of three. You could go back there and then... Um, where that beehive was that I said was another spot that you could get health, you could go back there and grab the health. That's a bit slow, it loses about 20 seconds. What you want to do is get health from these snowballs. I'll show you my strat first. I'm going to ground pound the snowball in my strat. Uh, standing here is most consistent for me. Yeah. That rarely happens. With this strat, you just don't want to jump too early, otherwise he'll throw the snowball higher because you jump. Yeah, it's a bit less consistent on emulator, but it's a very consistent for me on console. Now that's my strat. I promise it's more consistent on console than this. That's my strat for it. Um, generally the more accepted strat is to bear punch it. Now this was found more recently that you could do this. You bear punch the snowball, get health. Um, but what can happen is if you go too early, you get behind the snow, you get in front of where the snowball's gonna land and it hits you on the back of the head, like that. And remember you've only got one health when you're trying this, so it's really easy to die with that ground pounds. I, I don't think I've ever died on the ground pound. But yeah, bear punch is probably easier. I'd recommend doing that. But I ground pound because it's muscle memory and I'm good at ground pounding, whereas I'm not as good at bear punching. Both work. I think, yeah, bear punching is a more generally accepted strat. But yeah, if I stand here, I'm pretty good at ground pounding. Yeah, that was bad because I jumped earlier. Yeah. So choose whatever way works. Just remember, you're going to have one health when you get out of this water like this, so you do need to get a health from this snowball. 
Um, you'll see the world record video has two health when it gets out of the water. That's because it only gets 99 notes in FP. It skips one in the water. And um, don't do that. Uh, there's been a route change since that video was made where you do now get 100 notes in FP because we found out that you could bear punch those snowballs rather than just ground bound them. People wanted to do it more. So uh, you want to jump on top of this house, grab these. Uh, then you want to jump out into the water, peck as low as you can to the water. Um, if you fall in, if you fall into the water, there's a bit of a slow animation. Like that. You have to get out of time shot too. So, yeah, you just want to jump and peck as low as you can. If you peck a bit high, you'll lose a bit of time because pecking in the air is kind of a slow way to move. So in here, you're going to jump up on this pole. Don't trigger Mumbo, obviously. Jump up on that pole. You can do it in Talent Drop. 100 notes. You should have 100. Make sure you don't have 99 because there's been a route change since the world record video. You, get, uh, you skip a note in TTC now. You get the note in FB. Um, these flame hitboxes are awful. Basically, you can like stand on a flame sometimes and it won't kill you. Alright, I got in the middle there, and see Mumbo's text come up? I'm pressing LRB to skip that. So, I'm pressing LRB to skip it, and that skips it for when I actually go and see Mumbo. But since it's in the death animation, it doesn't actually matter um, that I'm using that time to skip text, because it doesn't lose any time, because the animation would have to play out anyway. Let's see if I can do it one more time. Just keep in mind it's not super consistent that you do fall down there. Like these flame hitboxes are really finicky. But yeah, that's good. Twice to get that text skip. Um, just make sure you die. It doesn't really matter if you skip that text or not. Save like probably four seconds. I don't know the exact timing. It doesn't save that much time, so don't freak out if you don't get it. If you haven't got the mumbo token up there from before, make sure you grab it. You can jump around these shoes. Um, just make sure you get around them, because it's you can hit them, and it's annoying. Another one of these big bum clips. I won't talk about it now because we already talked about it. I, I didn't count my flaps though, that was bad. Alright, the nav's a bit different though. Hold R and right. You want to hold right quite a bit. I'm going to keep using feathers till Banjo's head goes above that door and then beat bomb. I probably could have got away with using one less feather there. So, you want to hold more right than not because it's pretty easy to void out there. I'll show if I only hold a little bit, right? Right, that nap was a bit weird. Um. Alright, cool. This safe state is done, FP. Anyway, um, it's kind of hard to show it, but you can void out if you don't hold right enough. It's kind of weird. It's if you hold it enough that you're facing a certain angle, and then if you don't hold it anymore, it's really easy to void out on that angle. But yeah, hold R and right. One more time. Wait till you're above the door and beak bomb. You don't have to beak bomb. You can just fly to the door. So, if you're having trouble with it, don't bother beak bombing.
Don't do that. That's bad. Notice I surfaced a little bit earlier in this room. That's because it's quicker to go along the surface than it is to swim underwater. So I like to surface reasonably early. Now I have 20 jiggies here, you only need 19. So once you've done this puzzle, you should have 9 left rather than 10. I got an extra jiggy to demonstrate a backup jiggy and a quicker jiggy. Um, if you're still watching from before, if you know a quick strat to get that bubble blue swan witch switch jiggy with the net clip, tell me, I really want to know. Anyway, just keep in mind that you should only have 9 jiggies there. That was a really good quick dive. Um, yeah, again, that's a quick dive. Uh, just jump and slide off the edge and let go of all the buttons. I actually do go for the talent trap into this loading zone. For some reason, it's really consistent for me. So to recap, that's the talent trap as you're entering on the same frame. You can see I got it, so you can try it. So it's pretty consistent for me. You know, just jump off the edge here and you'll like get in your falling animation. You want to mash A, flutter out of it, shoot three eggs. Make sure you have enough eggs for that. I probably should have gotten to talent trap rather than rolling to that cauldron as well. Again, 397, we skipped two in Clankers, one in TTC. Alright, another talent trap in the loading zone. This is probably the easiest one to get, even though I didn't get it. There we go. You don't have to do that, it saves like half a second. It's worse to miss it than it is to not get it, if you know what I mean. Like, if you don't get into talent trap and you go through the loading zone, that's pretty bad. It's worse than if you didn't try it at all. So, sometimes it's not worth trying it. With this gate, um, there's like, you can shoot eggs at it. It's kind of hard though, so if you're having trouble, just peck it. Yeah, um, I think that gate actually does take two eggs worth of hits. Hmm. <laughs> the funny thing about these stairs is you could actually build up a lot of velocity on them, and you need a lot of velocity to clip, that's how clips work in this game. But there's no way to clip on those stairs, unfortunately. Otherwise we might have MMM early. Anyway. Um, I've started trying a new strat here. It's like you peck out and then use your gold feathers. And you break through that door right away. Oh, I got the talent trot into the loading zone there too. That was really good. Gold feather here, try not to get your count down to seven. Like, don't use two gold feathers if you can. Because gold feathers are really tight. Uh, don't get into talent shot there. Um, don't forget to come back up this pole and get the note. World record gets this known as a pumpkin. Don't do that, it's slow. Um, world record is JC Tomo's 119.52 at the moment, so if I'm talking about a different video by the time you watch this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you can kill those two in one gold feather if you need health. That's not a bad place to get it. There are places in this level you can get health without gold feathers, but it's kind of hard and you can die from it, so... Those are a good place to get it. Alright, so with this roof you want to jump off the corner and kind of land on the edges. You will take damage. You want to roll, jump and flutter and then jump off and then kind of flutter so you don't take full damage. You take full damage if you don't flutter. Um, oh, that's cool. Ducking sends you hitbox. <laughs> anyway, um, 
I, I've sort of been testing out a new strap for this. Like, uh, if I can pull it off. So he will take full damage. Oh, he might not take full damage there, actually. Hmm. Alright. Alright, that's fair enough. Just full off then. I guess I don't need bunny strat anymore. Okay, so you can just fall off that hedge. It seems like a really high jump to not take full damage from it though. Alright, ground pounding as well. You want to grab the jiggy first. If I can. It's kind of got an awkward hitbox. I might redo this. Unfortunately, can't do this during runs. Can't load a save state. Uh, usually I come in from the other side of the bucket handle, is why I'm having a bit of trouble. I think if I dive down this way. Again, it could be just something that's different on emulator. Yeah. So you want to get over the top of this bucket. You want to get this note. Um, I have a slightly different strat than most people do. I go around this one and come out this way. Usually they get that in the reverse order. And it's more consistent than I made it look just there. So you go around, uh, press A for a bit to turn, get around here. You want to get this Mumbo token, once you get it, press A so it kind of stops your movement. Here you want to, as soon as you get the note, you want to hold right around this whiplash. You want to hold right around it, and you want to definitely hold it at some point. Don't kind of alternate between holding it and not holding it. That's kind of the strap for that. So I'll see if I can do it good. Hold right as soon as you grab the note, and then you can turn around and get these. Um, yeah, sometimes you can miss that note. Turning around behind that bucket is really hard. That's why I stress that you should have it set up. So you want to grab it and like then hold right, and you'll get those two. Don't try and do it by feel. Like don't. Yeah, don't alternate between holding right and not holding right. Just definitely decide to hold it at some point. Um, this warp, if you're mashing Z, you'll actually ground pound after it. So as soon as you go under the warp, you should just be holding Z. Just because you start a little bit over the ground. You don't have to peck to these notes, but you can. And I think the fastest way to do this is actually to take the damage here and just go through. So you can do that, but if you got like 3 health or less, I reckon you shouldn't. I reckon you should just go on the eggs and make your way around normal. Uh, peck out once you grab this note, get the gold feathers, there's a mumbo token inside of here. Um, somehow I'm not taking damage in that water, it seems really inconsistent. Sometimes you do take damage in the water, you do get an extra honeycomb from the whip crack, but you need to be careful because um, while you do get that extra honeycomb, often you take damage before you have the chance to grab that. If you need health, don't kill this bat, because this health just goes flying, you can't grab it in time. So don't kill bats for health, unless they're on the bottom floor. Uh, that's another one of them ground pound warps, where you should hold Z through it, rather than press it as you enter the room. Just a tiny little optimization. While well, Derek gets the ginger in that room, don't do that. You don't get that. You can walk under these, I think I forgot to mention that in Clankers. Just be really careful, they can take 2 damage. It might be tempting to use that room to restore health, but don't. Because I've used that to restore health in the past and it can kill runs, because they take 2 damage and just kill you instantly. And usually you're on 2 damage when you want to restore your health. Uh, that fire hitbox doesn't work right away so you have time to walk in and grab that mumbo token another thing is a little bit further back i didn't break the window after i'd been in the blue ginger area and you climb on the roof before you shock spring up wild record breaks a window there don't do that um that's the logo g you don't need to get that in any percent you um if you watch the um 
world record um, there's an extra jiggy left at the end so that logo jiggy is that extra jiggy and it's also the extra mambo token you can jump to that chair just be really careful because you can trigger Nabbit's cutscene if you do that you gotta climb the roof again and go down the chimney again there's a jig skip you can do there. Um, you can like kind of try and go on the fly pad and get the G on the same frame. All you do to do that is you basically you bear punch and you bear punch puts your hitbox into the jiggy and you start flying because you press A. So it's like B then A really quickly. Don't try that in runs though because it's really hard. This is also a jiggy that you can actually get in town truck. Um, so the first G in the game and and that G you can get in Talent Shop. So those are the exceptions. Other G's you should definitely cancel. Uh, you can egg this door, I think it's a little bit quicker. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I do it anyway because it seems apparently it's quicker. I think it's because you don't bounce back by pecking the door. Uh, you can kill these ghosts if you need health. Like, kill them here if anything because they both go on top of you and then you get two health. Uh, this ghost on the left, the one that's closest to me now, this one can hurt you because it's low enough. The other one can't unless you jump or unless it's like right over you and it's you're really unlucky. The other one has less chance of hurting you, basically. Uh, beehive jump is awful. Um, basically you want to jump while it's at the top of its bopping thing and then jump straight off it. Uh, I think it is a slope timer thing, so you gotta be careful about that. Once you get up onto this hedge, you wanna jump across. You might be able to peck and get across like that, or you gotta just take the damage. You can probably take the damage and stay in Talent Trot and try that. That's probably quick. I might start doing that then. So, you might be tempted to do like a save strat here, and I really love the save strat, but unfortunately it's not that consistent. The save strat is you'd like jump onto that hedge, then jump across. But it's really tempting, don't do it though. Even though I love that strat. It's just really hard to make that jump. So, yeah, wait till he's at the top of his cycle and jump across. Don't be put off if this is taking you several minutes to get when you first do attempts. It's really hard. The other good thing about Sandcastle Percent is with my current route, I don't do this jump anymore. So, I do the Mazes of Pumpkin. So, that's another selling point of Sandcastle Percent, you don't have to do that. Um, if you really are having trouble with it, you can sort of walk back around through the maze. Then, you want to like walk out of the maze, climb this, go over, down there's a cellar. And there'd be a note there. Um, that note is a note we got after the cellar. So what you do is you leave that note and then you'd grab that, jump across to the church area. Um, I might as well quickly show it. Um, yeah, so if you don't do this trick, it's probably, a lot of people say four seconds, I think it's more like 10 seconds, but I haven't timed it myself. So if you decide not to do the beehive jump, do this. You would have left this note after the cellar, grab that note and you jump across. Anyway, back to this. Yeah, but this is the strategy you should be doing if you're trying to pull times. Yep, I have a lot of health, a lot more health than usual. It's not uncommon to be down to one or two health at this point. Um. These notes are really hard, I don't know how people get so consistent at them. So wait till you're a little bit over this weather vane, and then... So your head should be over, over the parts that come out, and then you want to jump and use your ground pound recoil to grab that. Don't be worried about the slide down, I've never fallen off from that slide before. Do kind of pull in there, just in case. So my strat here is I run right up against this corner and jump out. And I kind of jump towards the edge here. You want to be really careful there, especially if you've got one health. Because if you don't land too high on the roof, you do take full damage. But it should be really fine. You jump out, you aim for about this note, and then you do that. 
A lot of people will like land at this point when they jump out and then kind of walk out there. I don't think that's very good because you have to do extra walking. You just gotta be careful not to take full damage. Try and peck as late as you can there because your peck can be cancelled by the grounds and you can get into talent truck quicker. Um, this is a part that's different if you didn't get the skip in FP. So if you did get it, like I did, you walk out into the middle, Mumbo will wake up and grab the notes while he's waking up. So that's what you do if you did get it. If you didn't get it, you probably want to avoid waking them up. Probably jump out into the middle and he'll do his text here, LRB, LRB, then press B to transform. Um, the way that you know... There's a way to know when you can transform, but since you grab the notes here, you don't really need it. You grab that note, talent rock cancel, transform. Uh, he'll have some uns he'll have some text that stops you here, so you need to press L R B. I'm just going to talk a little bit about movement with the pumpkin. It's similar to banjo movement. Alright, so we're looking at velocity again. We want that to be as high as possible. Starts walking. Wow, if I held the full joystick range, she starts walking. It gets to like 500. That's the same as Banjo's walking speed, I think. But you can see it takes a while to get there. So what you want to do is you want to jump. You get like straight up there. A lot quicker than kind of trying to accelerate. And also when you turn around you want to be going to 500 because if you turn around um, if the velocity is changing it might be because the ground's not entirely flat but um, yeah just keep that in mind or it could be because I'm not holding the full range on my joystick anyway see so he has like 58 there and you can see his velocity is 382 so you need to make sure you do have that full range when you turn around you want to jump, um, don't worry about keeping jumping with the pumpkin because he doesn't have a slowdown at the end of his jump or slide or anything. So yeah, you can just jump once or twice, probably a few times, and then um, just walk from there. World Record gets that note then goes around to Logo, don't do that, that was a mistake. You just want to go straight to this part. And you remember we got that note earlier when we came out of the cellar. That's MMM. Now it's slightly quicker to walk down this hill than it is to jump. Be careful about this ghost in the way here. It'd be a bit of a pain. If he really is an issue, you should gold feather him and then grab the one inside the coffin to make up for it. Anyway, so I've got him there. Um, there's kind of a skip you can do here. If you ground pound it, sometimes you can hit the switch in the same ground pound. I've got a video of it on YouTube, so if you're interested, you can have a look. But I don't know how it works. Also, you can ground pound the lid and then like keep mashing Z and get another ground pound while he's still in the air but for some reason I can't get that to work on emulator so I'm just going to do the lane strap so yeah you ground pound then mash Z get another ground pound hit the switch basically um so auto saves happen when you go through warps so we went through a warp to view the RBB lobby with the water raising, then we went back through a warp to get back to this crypt. So, 
the switch should be pressed where we are now. Then we'd look at the RVB lobby and it would auto save before it looks there. So it would auto save that the switch is pressed. Then it would raise the water, then it would come back to this room and it would auto save here. It's possible if you reset before you come back to this room that it's auto saved that the switch is pressed but not that the water level has been raised. So you do reset here, but you want to make sure that you come back to this room first. So you're looking at this room. Okay, so you do the reset. Another note about that auto saving thing is it's kind of useful for practice. If you're practicing on cart, like on drill cart, you can use your knowledge of auto saves to let you practice whole levels, basically. Like, if you want to practice grabbing the GDs in TTC, um, oh, don't forget to hold start like now and you'll skip the demo. If you're practicing like TTC, you can do basically the whole level right up until you go into Nipper. Don't go into Nipper and it won't auto save and you can practice grabbing those GDs. Uh, you go into English here, by the way. And the good thing about playing on file one is you can just mash here. Good time is sub 40 for this. That's a really good time for me. Um, probably expect to get between 40 and 50 when you're starting out, maybe. I could be wrong, it could take longer than that. I don't remember what my game time's all at. Alright, so, you want to get this jiggy. There's a little jig skip you can do here. You hit the eye and you walk back into the nose and you get the jiggy while the cutscene's going. Now you should only have two jiggies in the lair. I've got an extra one for demonstration. As a little glitch you can do, it's kind of fun. Also, that's a good time to check mumbo tokens. I like to check out at 15 here. Um, there's a little glitch you can do if you jump straight in the cauldron. Uh, I didn't get it. I'll show you what happens. I noticed I was in Talon Truck before, and when I come out, I won't be in Talon Truck. So I like to jump into the cauldron before the cutscene, just to um, kind of. I had to jump in there before the cutscene so I don't have to do any navigation out of Talon Trot. Anyway, so if you can get the jump into the cauldron. Banjo will actually be there during the cutscene. See, he's like there. It's kind of cool, he can't move, but... Um, yeah, and usually when you get that, you're inside the cauldron when this comes back. So you don't have to do any navigation out of Talon Trot. It's a little bit quicker, I reckon. That's a cool glitch as well. Um, interestingly, with the cauldrons before the 810 door, um, like in between Furnace Fun and the 810 door, the location that it puts you if you jump inside the cauldron is actually right next to Big Pop. So if you could gain control in that cutscene, you'd probably have an 810 door skip. I have a video that has gaining control in that cutscene, and you can actually do it, but you can't do it on those cauldrons, unfortunately. It's kind of interesting though. Two routes through here, so you'd surface. Um, slow route I'll show first. So, slow route is to go through these stairs. I recommend this if you're starting. Fast route doesn't save too much time. All we want to do is hit this water switch, so we'd go and hit it there. Um, fast route is you want to just do two flaps here, one more to get up here. I high jump to this pole, other people time trot, I'm not good at it. And then Talon Trot and you want to kind of jump off there. It's just like, if you miss it once or twice, it's not even worth it. So I didn't go for it to quite late into when I'd been running. Hit this switch and if you get a Talon Trot, you can actually do like a quick dive during the cutscene. There we go. So I go off the edge and I Talon Trot. You don't have to go off the edge. You still dive down a little bit if you don't go off the edge. But yeah, that's always quicker. Try and go for that. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You just got to swim down. Um, try for the talent trot before you prioritize getting off the edge. Because if you get off the edge and you're not in talent trot, it doesn't actually sink you at all. Um, if you talent trot, whether or not you're off the edge, it still sinks you a little bit. Back up gold belly here. Um, I get it if you're like six or lower. I just got to put demonstration there. 
We're going to do a trick called 640 skip. Um, now this, for this trick, I actually kind of want to explain my theory on clips in this game. So I got a state just before here. This is the slate for FP early, but um, it's kind of, you can do it by hand as well. I'm not that good at getting the clip by hand, but what you need is you need, you need to have velocity. Y velocity specifically. So that's minus one there. Um, you can see when I walk against it, I get lots of Y velocity sometimes. Yeah, so you can see when I walk against it, I do get a bit. And you can kind of jump and get yourself hooked on there. Anyway, so you need, a, you need to have a spot to build up velocity to clip for these style of clips. The big bomb was a little bit different. There's velocity, and on PAL, you need 2,900 velocity to do most clips. Scriptor comes with a, um, a option pulse clip velocity, and that lets you test out whether places are clippable. Um, that's how we first discovered clankers early. Um, there's a there's an early way to get into clankers without paying jiggies, and it's Taz only. But um, yeah, that's how we looked at it. So we knew that a clip was possible, but it took us days to actually get the clip. So my theory is you need velocity and you need to go to have a slope that you could walk up onto. So if you try and walk up here, you don't get up. But if you walk up here, you zip up to the top. And my theory is when you have enough velocity downwards, you fall through rather than walking up, basically. I'll show you, I'm gonna pulse the clip velocity and you can see my velocity every second frame it, well, every couple frames, it's going to negative 2,900. That's the required velocity for power. So you can see if I walk up against this, when I've got that, I'll fall right through. So that's basically how clip works. Um, so you do need two things. You need a clippable surface and the velocity. Um, there are places where you can get... Um, get the velocity but it's not clippable and um, I'll just show you one of these places really quickly so you want to be watching my wire velocity see it building there you can actually just get hooked on here negative 4000 when it goes green that means you can clip and I've sat there for like several minutes having it at negative 4000 and it just there's nowhere to clip on these stairs <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, you need two things. Lots of velocity and um, a clippable surface. Anyway, we'll go back to this. So this is applied in this clip and one more in the run. You want to hit the switch before you jump out. So you jump out to change the camera angle, basically. Uh, try and get it in one jump. I do it after I hit the switch because otherwise you could jump out and you could fall down. If the water's already raised, it doesn't matter if you don't make the jump. Anyway, so you want this camera angle. The camera angle you don't want is if you jump into this pipe, it zooms in. Do not do the clip with that camera angle. You can get it, but you just don't know where you're going. Wait, I'll get it here, if I can. <laughs> see, I'm at uh, minus 4,000 velocity, so it's just a matter of clipping through now. Yeah, but see, I can't change my camera rule. It's really bad. So what you want to do is just have the camera at this angle. What you want to do, you can see with my inputs, I'm kind of mashing up. The numbers are going all over the place, but what I am doing is mashing the up direction on the joystick. Um, it's a bit harder on the controller that I'm using now. Mashing up on the joystick, you hold against that left corner and you clip through. So that's what happens with that. You could see the Y velocity increasing when I did that. So that's what happens. You build your velocity and you clip through. Some people say that it's like a gradual hold of up. I don't disagree with that, but I learned this trick on a GameCube stick where there's no such thing as gradual holding. So basically I just mash up like maybe five or six times, maybe even eight. I'm a bit low on this ledge here, so I need to go to the right and go back to the left, I think. I don't know. 
Yeah, just make sure you press it more than two times. Press the up direction. I uh, apologize, this trick is a lot less consistent on this controller. Usually I'm a bit better at it. There we go. So yeah, you just want to like tap up and you won't even worry about that trick once you know the strap. It's the kind of trick that's really daunting when you first look at it, but once you know the strap for it, it's quite easy. So wherever this tunnel is, you just walk to the left. Then you go right somewhere here and then you keep going through. I'm not very good at that tunnel, I always take the damage there. But you basically, yeah, you, walk, you hug this left wall, try not to get hit by that guy. Then I think it's before this vertical one you go right, I could be wrong, but yeah, I usually take one damage through there, not two. And this leaf jump here, um, see there's like a little dot on the ground there? You want to use that for your reference. So you want to stand a bit behind it, like maybe there, and then jump, and you get the leaf jump. These are really good ones. Um, what could happen is you could go too far forward. Now notice I'm mashing A there, that's because you can actually get up if you kind of get hooked on the edge of it. It's a lot harder than it seems. And again, this is a little bit different on emulator. Now see I got hooked on the edge and I jumped, so you do want to mash A when you get to the edge of that leaf. But yeah, it's, it's around there. That dot is what I used to line up. Yeah, it should work. Make sure you grab the gold feather up there, because gold feathers are tight in this route. You want to just go back a bit to let your camera flip, then talent try You can try and walk out onto that path before your camera flips, but it's a bit dangerous. You notice I got the talent trap before this cutscene, but since this cutscene goes through a loading zone, I don't keep that talent trap, unfortunately. Make sure you grab those three feathers before as well. Um, just because you need feathers a lot. Uh, you want to try and grab this gold feather if you can. I did. Ten I have now, so that's really good. Excuse that little moon jump there. Alright, so... Yeah, grab that gold feather if you can. It's always... You need a lot of gold feathers in this wrap. You should have eight to be comfortable in clock clockwood because there's there's those clap trap things and there's four of those that you need to get stuff from so i think two gold feathers for each if you've been really comfortable it's you need eight a lot of people do a quick dive here but i just do a jump and you get low enough that you go in the pipe anyway so i don't see the point of doing a quick dive if you didn't talk to Brentilda in german you can talk to her here um I talked to her before TTC, but here is good. You only need 15 jiggies at this point. I got an extra one. I got the bubble gloop swamp, which switch jiggy. You don't have to get that. If you can find a consistent setup for it though, tell me and you get that instead of clankers, which switch, or maybe conga, if you can find a good setup for it. But yeah, it's not the route at the moment. Mumbo token. Again, talk to Brentilda if you haven't. Then we go back. Now, since we exited Mad Monster Mansion until we enter Click Clock Wood, that's about a six and a half minute split. I recommend having a split for entering Click Clock Wood. You won't end up being scared of 640 skip if you're using my setup, hopefully. Let me know if you are though. Um, but. It's just a really long split, so I like to split it so my click clock wood gold is really clean and it's just about click clock wood. Because there's six and a half minutes of movement that could make your really nice individual level of click clock wood not be a gold. Alright. This is the last banjo level in the run. You probably roll to this platform. You can talent trot at the end. Since this cutscene doesn't change the map, you stay in talent trot.
Um, I like to kill this guy, you don't have to. I'll show you why I like to kill this guy later. I'm really bad at jumping on these leaves, by the way. Ugh, leave me alone. I jump around the outside of that guy. You can jump to the left of him, but it's a bit... You can get hit by him, and it's, I don't think it's really worth it. I'll show you the jump to the left of him in summer. Mumbo token. Again, don't worry if you forget a mumbo token, there's a backup right near the end of where you need it. So you can forget like the last mumbo token and you still have a backup ready. Now uh, that flat was a little bit late. I should have done that a tad Just so I hit the ground and got into talent shot earlier, mainly. Uh, peck to that platform if you're scared. It will give you a bit of extra distance. Now you want to kill this guy because um, when you go through this cutscene he can spawn on top of you right at the end. And if his health is close enough you should probably try and grab the health just for safety. Um, let me see, I think I want to show why I kill that grubbling down the bottom. So that's why I kill him down the bottom. You don't have to, but just be aware that that can happen. So since you're in the recoil of your ground pound, you don't um, take full damage. But if you hit an enemy, you do take full damage. Uh, you can grab yourself there as well. Just as backup. I probably needed that, so it's good that I grabbed it. <coughs> I think my best time exiting spring is a 155 on the individual split. It's about two minutes is my normal one. I'm not sure about exiting all the other seasons so I haven't really looked at that. Yeah, I have less um, time references later on because I never get to it. Alright, so there's a few ways you can do this. There's a, like a talent truck jump but I don't really understand it and I don't see how it's even possible. You jump to the left of the bird, but you get hit like that a lot of the time, so I don't. I think it's possible. Yes, it's hard, but you can do it. I don't recommend it. Or you can jump up and kind of roll under him. And hopefully you don't hit him, because if you can, you want to avoid dragging the bird kill cutscene all together in Click Lockwood. But it doesn't really matter if you don't. I don't think I explained jumping around those birds in spring, which I really should. Um, these birds, those three up here, you can jump around them in all seasons, you can. Uh, but the birds get bigger every season, so it's actually harder. See, I can do it in summer. I don't do it in runs in summer. Um, I do it in spring in runs. You can do it in autumn, although even the best runners don't do that. It's really hard to do it in autumn. It's almost impossible. Alright, so what I like to do is I like to kind of roll underneath them. Not flat for that long. And hopefully if I roll underneath them all good enough, then I won't kill any and I won't trigger a cutscene. But if you do, it doesn't matter. It's not that long. There are other ways. You can talent truck and kind of wait for them to go back in if you want. It's also pretty quick. You don't have to get out of talent truck, but I just find that 
when you're rolling, you're moving while they're out as well, so you're not losing as much time. Uh, this place is really bad for a camera flip. Um, let me see if I can get the flip. There, there's a flip. Like, that can really throw you off. So take your time, just land here, wait, rotate camera around two, and then go. Really take your time with that. Um, you don't want to fall. So, now I think there's actually a strat where you zoom in your camera. And then it's fine. I don't use it personally, but I think that's what JC Tomo uses, so. Yeah. I think that avoids the camera flip, but I'm not used to it as much. I don't use my zoom buttons as much as I should. Um, here's a bit of slope time and manipulation, so I'll just bring up those watches again. Again, these are in script talk, which I'll link. So, we're watching slope time, and this is similar to the ticker tower skip thing. So, these birds obviously are going to be a pain when we're trying to jump over. So, these slopes, once you're on there for long enough, you do slip off. But, what you can do is you can just walk out on these slopes while you're waiting for the birds to come back in, and then just jump. You have time to do it. You have, I don't want to say plenty of time, but you have enough. Just be careful. You don't want to stay on for too long. You don't want to stay on for too short like that as well. Or as a bird will hear. But you have a bit of time. It's around a second. It's nowhere near as bad as it looks. Once you get this mumbo token, you want to jump, get in your falling animation and flap. Remember, you can only flap once you're in that falling animation, so just mash till you get there. There's nothing wrong with mashing, eh? Chewing it. Another falling animation flap thing there. Another mumbo token. Yeah, and this part has got a lot of mumbo tokens here, so it's good to be in the route. Um, you can kind of jump out and um, ground pound. Sometimes you hit the switch, sometimes you don't. If you don't kill that bird, make sure you don't talon shot, like when this cutscene ends, make sure you talon shot kind of walk off so the bird doesn't hit you and then talon shot. If you just try and get the talon shot there, it will hit you. With Naughty's getting into his house, you don't want to like peck it, you just want to stand up here and use your gold feather and you'll, there'll be like no knockback, so that saves a bit of time. Give his text, try not to moon jump while he's doing that. Yeah. Now uh, we don't actually go into winter in this route just because there's not much point. All we'd need from there is notes and we can get them in other places. We only need 810 notes. Alright, so um, we want to grab the um, mumbo token from this guy. Now, a little thing about these clap traps is look at him now. He's facing this way. The back of his hitbox doesn't hurt you. So behind his eyes, all that area doesn't actually hurt Banjo. And another thing is when he's doing his clapping animation, that doesn't actually change his hitbox at all. His eyes will change when you go near him, but the hitbox doesn't change, so... See, I can stand like right behind where he is there, and it doesn't really affect it at all. So yeah, just take note of where they are normally, and then um, you can jump on the back of them. But you should actually use gold feathers, so it's kind of useful to know that hitbox thing, but you don't really need it for runs. Maybe if you're out of gold feathers, you might be able to use it. But yeah, definitely, um, definitely use gold feathers there, because they can take two damage and they're really nasty. 
And that's why gold feathers are so tight. Just try and use as little as you can with the gold feathers. Um, another time for passing these birds, so I'd roll under them. When you enter here, if you don't hold down straight away, you'll take full damage. Sometimes. Kinda of hard to it's a weird property. There you go. So you wanna hold down, you don't want to touch that honeycomb. But if you do hold down, and like you wanna hold down left dish, he'll be fine. I killed this Grublin because he can sometimes get in the way, you don't have to, but it's, I don't know, I just do it. Again, once you get to the top of this, you want to flap sort of out of it. It didn't look like a flap there, but I did press A and it cancelled the flap really early, so it didn't look like a flap. But yeah, just let you get into Talon Shot a bit sooner. This fly is awful, but um, I find the best way to deal with it is just, um, just pretend it's not there. I mean, watch out for it, but... Don't bother yourself without killing it or anything. There's a few positions that it can be in where it can get you, but most of the time, if you just run past it, you should be fine. So there, that's definitely one where you can just run past it. It's kind of an awful fly, I want to show it again, because it's scary. Now that's a tricky position. That's probably one where I would have killed it. I should have saved that save state in time, Drew. Yeah, so a lot of the time you can just jump around it. Often if you stop to kill it, you lose health and you fall off. It's not the leeching health that's bad, it's the falling off that's bad. So you got to climb all this again if you fall off. Um, this guy, he has text. A lot of people just run straight through him and deal with the text, but I just jump around. It's roughly this outer dark ring that you want to jump around, that's what I use. Um, also with the door, if you are going to jump around him, with the door, you do want to hug the left of the door. If you go too far in, then he gets text. Yeah, so you definitely hug the left of the door. Or you can jump in the window, but... I don't know about that. Alright, so you want to jump up here and kind of hug the wall there, and then you... You want to jump against the wall and then kind of pull the left and you grab those three notes. Um, it's easy to miss, so if you're missing it like two or three times, it's probably not worth going for. Do do try and go for it in earlier runs though. I mean, you're not going to lose that much time missing it. And you might as well get the muscle memory for when you start getting good times. As you can see, it's not super consistent for me. If you miss it like two or three times, it's probably worth fire jumping. You want to exit out the window. You've got another slope manipulation, that's why I left the slope timer watch up. It's the same thing. That was too early, um, and that's bad. So you do have to be careful. But actually, I die more trying to kill these birds normally than I do using that slope timer. Don't hit the window switch, you don't need it. If you do need more time, you can probably peck out and kind of roll on the slope then flutter over. The only danger with that is you, the bird might come out again before you're done. Ground pound off the edge here, you use your recoil and you don't get damage, but don't land in the bramble, whatever you do, because that bramble will cancel the fact that you're in your uh, ground pound recoil. So yeah, if you fall in the bramble, you'll die. Maybe it'll take four health, but you'll probably die. Um, I forgot to mention there's actually two different routes for autumn. There's one where you do spring clip, ironically we're doing it in autumn, and there's one where you don't. I'm going to show the one where we do do spring clip, but I'm also going to show what you do if you don't want to. 
Earlier I kind of took damage on a bird that was not intentional. Um, so if you're not doing spring clip, you probably wouldn't get this note here. If you weren't doing spring clip, what you'd do is you'd um, use your gold feathers, you'd fall down, get those, You do all this. Now this is where you lose time on sprint, but climbing this and going across here, you get a note there, because I got that. You get that after on sprint, but, um, then you get more notes here. I got these this note early, like as soon as I entered order. You get this note, you'd get the one under this bird, you'd probably jump off here, and you'd exit normal. So if you were doing spring flip, um, which is great if you're doing it. You'd get these two. We've already got the rest of the notes along that path, so don't need to worry about a gold feather. You want to have at least one gold feather left after this, because there's another one of them clap traps. But your zero its gold feather can give you some invulnerability, so if you have seven, it's almost like you have eight. Anyway, so here's Spring Clip. So as you can see, it's a bit quicker because you don't have to go out that door, you don't have to climb any of that. You know. Here's Spring Clip. So we're on to that theory about clipping again that I was talking about. Um, so this part where you walk up, that's the clippable slope. The part a bit to the right of it is the place where you put velocity. So we want to watch the Y velocity if you want here. Um, it'll just help you understand why spring clip is happening. What you want to do is you want to jump and you want to kind of hold forward. You can mash it a little bit like 640 skip if you want. I don't really have a proper, well I don't really have a actual way of doing it. And you see I got like negative 4000 and then I fell through. So what you want to do is get hooked on here. You can probably do it while you're walking, actually. But it's a bit harder for me. I like to jump and get hooked. So you can get hooked on here. And you build your velocity. You just want to make sure you move left once you know you've been hooked for a while. Like that. And then you want to move left. So see I moved left just before I clipped through, that's because the clippable part is left. I'll do one or two more. If you're not getting this super consistent, you should probably do the other route, because this doesn't really save that much time. But what it does is it avoids you out and it saves you exiting auto normally. But avoid out, you'll still keep all the notes you collected. So yeah, dying you won't though. So don't just die instead of doing spring clip. Also, if you have zero lives, please don't do these, because if you void out and you have zero lives, then you get game over for some reason, even though voiding out doesn't take a life. There we go. So, if you're not getting really consistent at that, then don't try it, but even even when I was bad at it, I was still doing it in runs, because I knew one day I'd be better at it enough that it would save time. That's kind of my motto with these runs. I do the, I do the fast scratch even if I'm not that consistent at them. Where I can. So that saves also walking from autumn back to this podium here. And we still have a lot of notes. Um, by the way, I'm usually a bit more consistent at Spring Clip. I think it's a bit different on Emulator. So we're back into Spring, and um, as I said, this is our last banjo level. Alright, so we gotta get this mumbo token. Just be really careful, this will take two health. If you have five health, I'd recommend jumping through that claptrap, trying to grab it without gold feathers. And if you take two health and you haven't got it, just come back and grab the mumbo token. The reason is you want to actually have three health right here, where I am now, is best. You can jump around this one, it's not too bad. If you get hit, you should have three health anyway, so if you fall in the water, it's no biggie. Um, Alright, first backup mumbo token. Notice I've got 25 now. 
you should check that once you go through the clap trap here. Um, there's one there. Uh, that's not my personal favourite backup one. So there's two backups actually. But that one you'd need gold feathers for, so I don't really like it. I'm going to do one of them roll high jump things, where you get a high jump from the roll distance. Alright, so I'll show you the route if you don't need a backup, which will probably be the one that you're doing. Um, so, you should have three health here. Imagine I do, you can make it across the bramble only losing one, but it's harder. But if you have three health, you do want to lose both those health. It's just a bit scary when you have two. So then you go onto here. Right. Um, if you need the backup mumbo token, you should come up here after you get those notes. Uh, let me think about this. I think I'll get an extra health, because you should have three health here anyway. Probably ground pound recoil would be best. I don't know about this really. Flat maybe? Yeah, flat's good. And then you can probably make it back without losing another health. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what you do if you need the extra mumbo token. You should be trying to enter mumbos on one health though. And again, like, try and grab a feather when you're entering mumbos. Because if you can, you don't want to restore feathers before the grungy fight. But there is that feather thing before the grungy fight if you need it. But if you got over about 15 or 16, I'd say don't bother restoring. Um... I'm just going to show you the reference to know when you can transform. So when I wake up Mumbo, he's going to kick his feet up now. So you can press B when he kicks his feet up. If you click it too early, you just bear punch. But I'll try and press B as optimally as I can. So that was really early that I pressed it. I'm more predictive than reactive with it. But yeah, when his feet goes up, that's when you can press B, and this is all the banjo levels will be doing for this run. So Death Warp, that's why I said make sure you lose as much health as you can in the Bramble without dying. And that's all the banjo levels. So now we're onto the B stuff. I think this is a lot more fun. 78 notes for Click Clock Wood. I'm not sure if I showed the totals. I'll show the totals for the other levels if I forgot. I showed these three. I, I think I'll show them again just in case you didn't see the first half. Mumbo's. Uh, that one jiggy is Boggy's, uh, the snowman pie. Remember those five jiggies are the cellar, the well, um, Napa, the church roof. And, um, ah, oh, the pipe at the end with the pumpkin. Don't get logo in Mad Monster Mansion. Yep, no jiggies there to worry about. Cool. Alright, uh, this glitch is called RBA. Um, this is the PAL only glitch. So if you're on a US or Japanese version, this won't work. You can't do this glitch. There is a TAS only form of it. Um, but you only get one shot at it per save bar and you're an hour into the run at this point, so people don't do it. I know it's sad only. The way you want to do is get up into this corner. I'm going to hold up and sort of left a little bit. Uh, your right foot should be in the wall. The more left you can get without him sliding across the wall, the better. So like if I'm too far left, he'll start sliding like that. Basically the more left you can get without doing that, the better. If you're there's one point where you can be a little bit too far left and it won't be better, but it's hard to get that point. Just try and be as left as you can without sliding across the wall. If you slide across, it's not better. Like, it won't be better even before you start sliding. Sorry about this janky movement. Alright, so you want to get your foot up there. Hold B. B makes you go faster as a B, by the way, so you want to hold it when you're flying all the time. Except for some special cases. Hold B. <sighs> Sorry about this, this is really bad. See, I'm sliding along the wall, so I was too far left. Alright, so you do five A taps. So you hold B, tap A five times. Um, if that doesn't work, tap A five times, and if that doesn't work, tap A five times again. 
This is why we're skipping, basically, the Mumbo transforming you back into Banjo. So now we can do all the levels as the feet that we missed. So, I'll show you, the clip's actually really easy to get. But if you get it too easily, and with too high velocity, you void out. So, the navigation is a hard part of this one. Again, I'm too far left there. You can probably get a clip like while your right foot foot's in the wall, that's a good reference. But it's a bit harder when it's at this point. Still possible. Yeah, you want it like basically when his right foot is just inside the wall. Again, let go of B when you void, uh, when you clip out too. You really want to let go of B there. Um, once you get it, hold R, hold up to kind of look down. You want to nose dive, and you also want to press B while you're nose diving. I'll do one more. Um, again, if you have any problems, just comment or something. There we go. So just make sure you let go of B when you get clip out. So this is another one of them tricks where you're not going to worry about it if you have a good setup, but you're going to dread it if you don't. You can still lose time on it. Like, I still lose a bit of time on it sometimes when it's not being nice. So yeah, the more left the better, as long as you're not sliding along the wall, basically. Uh, so that was uh, jump and then four taps to get over that wall. You can do it by feel, but jump and then four taps is a number. I just mash here until I'm over the wall. And then I'm coming in from this side, but normally I come in from the other and kind of turn around. Um, so you're just going to get under that. Make sure you hold B when you're nose diving. Please don't like fall down like that. That's kind of suboptimal. All right, um, R B B. So the first level is B. There's going to be a lot of tap counts. So jump and then press two. I'm going to be really precise about my language here because. It's a bit unclear, like, because that was three taps, but it's jump and two taps. So it can be a bit ambiguous. Hold B when you're flying always as well, unless I say so. So here's one of these notes. Uh, drop into the water, you don't have to press A, you just fly automatically out of the water. This is one of the only flights where you don't hold B. So you just fly to that note, and then you start grabbing these. So don't hold B for that flight of the ship. If you hold B, you'll go over the note, you'll just have to walk back to it. Um, a little note about movement as a bee, it's the same as a pumpkin. If you're walking, which is rare, um, you just want to jump to get the instant speed. When you turn around, you want to jump as well. Uh, there's no slowdown at the end of your jump, so go nuts with it. You don't have to keep jumping, though. Alright. Here's another clip in this room. This one's a bit annoying, but it's, not, it's unlike RBA because it's the clip that's hard, it's not the nap that's hard. I actually held my controller a bit weirdly doing this one. I hold B and the joystick with my right hand and A with my left hand just because I'm left handed I mash with A. So there's a few strats for it. You hold up in all the strats basically. Hold up to nosedive. There's one strat that basically says mash in the corner. That's not a good strat. Don't do that. Um, there's one where you sort of slide along this pole. Like you slide along it. If you don't get it now and you turn around, probably once you get to the corner you turn around, and you keep just turning, basically you get it. And don't worry about voiding out, you can fly really high here, like I'm super duper high and I haven't voided out yet, and just for reference that's where we clipped, so you've got a lot of room to play with, don't worry about it, you mash as fast as you can for this. Uh, there's one that I like, and you sort of get into this corner and you rotate around, I like that strap. And the good thing is it leads into that strat that I just showed, that you slide along the wall. Kind of leads into that strat if you don't get it. So I do, I do a bit of a combination of those two. Try and mash A as fast as I can. I, it, tell me if you get a good setup for this, because this is one of those clips that I still dread a bit. Oh, you don't lose that much time on it though, but... I think it seems like you lose less time, because it's kind of in the level. But this is a bit harder on elevator as well. But yeah, but slide along the wall, don't just sit in one spot. You either want to be rotating or sliding.
The faster you mash, the better. I think I got that clip because I started mashing a lot faster. Now, you can hit these fans, be careful. If that happens, you can't get back into fly and you die. And I want to scare you because it barely ever happens. It's happened once to me and it's hard to even do it if you try. But you want to fly here in the middle of those fans. Don't worry too much about it, just keep in mind that you can hit it and don't like be silly around them. Um, I came out with this strat recently, just fall off here and then press fly. You don't have to fall for as long because landing once you're in fly is a big issue in as the bee. That's something we try and narrow, like, avoid a lot. Anyway, so you jump then four taps. Four taps here. And I apologize if my tap numbers are different than yours. Some people tap faster than me and they need less no more taps because they tap faster if you space them out you get higher so i apologize if my spacing is different and you need less or more taps uh you will need five to do the rba clip though um this that to get up here is jump then five taps so six in total i like to jump off here and kind of pull myself back a lot of people walk off There's a quick strap for this pipe, I've never gotten that though. You can fly and kind of get that line of notes all in the one fly. Uh, that's quick and then you just exit the room from there. What I do is I lure this guy out. There's two straps you can do here. Um, you can void out or you can exit out. I'll show you exit out first. I don't exit out usually. Just because getting to this pipe is hard. Like, you see I got caught in the roof there. When you exit out, you'd want to walk down these notes and then fly. Um, what I do is I just face this way. Doesn't really matter how you can. Yeah, there's a big range on this. Face this way. Uh, jump, press A once to get the fly, and just keep holding B. Don't press A again. So jump A again. Uh, it's like the one time it didn't work. Jump and A again. You avoid. You clip out. You void out. Uh, you respawn, you still got all your notes, and then you just lie down here and start grabbing. So that's what I do. I'd recommend that because you don't have to worry about getting into the pipe. But I don't know, some people reckon going out the pipe is quicker. I reckon it's less consistent, it might be quicker going out the pipe, but this is certainly more consistent. And it's another clip. I think clips are cool, so I try and put them in where I can. And that's a really easy clip. Just remember, you won't get that clip out if you a pressing A and trying to gain height at the same time. You just have to hold B to get that clip out. It's very horizontal. This level's a bit scary because of all the grill chompers as well. Um, there's no way to restore health as the B in this level. So you have five health. Grill chompers take two health per hit. So basically you get hit twice with one of them, then you one more hit from anything you die after that. So you gotta be really careful. There's death warp out at this level, but I consider that optional. I'll try and show both. There's a strat here, grabbing that note was a bit of a quick. I fly here and kind of like press B. I've only really thought about this recently. I fly here and I don't hold B, I think. And then you lure them out, if you can, and then you do that. It's kind of hard. So he gets lured out, and then you walk out. That's what I would consider that i go for. I'll show you another way once this guy comes in. You just fly and you hold B, then um, grab this node, take the damage, and that sets you up for a death warp. I would prefer not to do the death warp. Um, I'm going to load the state that... I guess I took the damage. I might redo that. I'll just show you one more what I'd do. And sometimes, if I didn't get it, what I would probably do in a run is I'd try and grab the note and get out as quick as I can. I'd try not to take the damage. But you can actually get him out and definitely not take that damage. If you do take the damage, you want to do the death warp. If you don't, you probably want to do the void out. 
I'll show you those at the end. Uh, this, I really like my kind of strat through these pools. I think this is Isotage's strat. Um, don't do that. I don't know why I've got an extra rate up there. Alright, so what you want to do is grab this note. You grab this note. Grab this note. Now here you want to jump over to grab that note. You can't make the jump, but what you can do is jump and then hold R and like up right here so that you're going to do a nose dive. Oh, um, I don't know why, but I think it's this controller. You know, once you grab the note, you want to hold B and tap A twice and you should make it right to that pipe. So again, jump. Hold in the direction that is forward for the B. It should be like uprightish. Uh, I promise this is more consistent. I think it's just this controller at the moment. Hold B once you get the note and tap A twice. You should make it to the pipe. If you don't, just walk in the pipe. Yeah. So that note is kind of annoying if you don't have that strat. So make sure you learn that one. So yeah, um, when you're flying to that note on that last barrel, don't hold B till you hit the note as well. Uh, you could fly between note 71 and 72 here. I don't know if it's quicker or not. There's a quick strat here that's kind of hard. You want to hold B and just press A and then fly. Then you want to get that note and then you want to fly around and get this note. It's kind of hard. I haven't got it in a run yet. I'll show you the other way you can do it. So if you don't make it, you just grab it and then you walk around and grab the extra note. I'll try it one more time. I think it depends how high in your jump you are when you fly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you land, just walk around. If you don't, try and fly around. Once you've done that, you want to um, fly over to this area. This is kind of an annoying fly in the run. I think I want to start doing something where I like fall off here and then don't have to fall as low on the fly or something. But we'll see. Yeah, you just want to grab these notes. Just be careful because if you fall in the water, it's really hard to land again. Um, here, you want to kind of jump off. But be careful. You want to get into this door. But if you get into it too sideways, you'll hit the water. But you'll just fly out even if you're trying to hold into the door. So what I like to do is land on the door and face inwards. Once you get in here, two taps of A, and then you should land right on these notes. Now, this room's where you got kind of two options. I haven't taken any damage, so personally, I do the death warp. I do the um, void out. Um, I'll show you what you do if you have taken damage at all in RBB. Sometimes you do that on purpose, like that uh, blue box with all the chompers. But yeah, it's definitely slower to death warp if you have full health, because you have to come out twice. And this is the void out. Jump in this water and just mash. Hold B as well. Voids out. You can see it's a lot quicker than a death cutscene. So if you haven't taken any damage, I'd really recommend that. Here, hold B and just mash A. Again, I probably won't be saying to hold B every single fly, but just assume that you do. 85 notes for Rusty Bucket Bay, no jiggies. Uh, here's an interesting strap. You want to kind of hold right and B-ish. And you want to try and get out of this door. So it's a bit more... It's not upright, but it's not the full range of right, if you know what I mean. If you hold the full range of right, you do this, and then it just gets stupid. You can sometimes still get out of it. This trick's actually easier on emulator. You don't have to hit the side of the pipe, but as you can see, it's more consistent if you hit it. That was too far right, but I think I'll still get out. This trick's stupidly easy on emulator. Yeah, the best way is to kind of go forward, but hit the pipe a little bit. These are way too far right. It might even be that I hold up and right. It's a lot harder than I'm making it look. Yeah, that's a really good angle to hit the pipe on, and then you just get it there. Ideally, you want to just hold the joystick in that direction, and kind of let go of it once you hit the pipe and let it do its own thing. But guide it if it needs guiding. Anyway, I'll show you what you do if you can't get that. You just fly over the top. Now, if I couldn't get that, I would actually fly over the top, then purposely void out, is what I would do, and try it again. 
But what you can do is you can just nose dive here and go through the door. So you don't need to get that trick, it just saves time. Again, jumping because it builds your speed instantly. Jump off the edge there because it's got a little bit of a. Um, I don't know why my safe state was so far now. Yeah, again, jumping build speed instantly. Don't double tap it accidentally. Jump off the edge because you've already got a bit of full wing speed once you reach the edge, so you fall quicker. And fly through the door. Just a little optimizations like that are what gets you times really good. So here's Gabby Zell. You want to drop two stairs. Uh, jump, press A once. Once you get through this door, press A twice. Camera goes bad here, but if you just hold B in no direction, you'll land straight on the slip. Uh, this trick's a little bit different on emulator, so I'll try my best. What I like to do is jump at this leaf and kind of pull back. You don't want to actually hit the leaf, you just want to kind of land in the middle. I'm going to fall through. That was what I would consider a bad Gobi Zelda. Again, that was a bit janky because I didn't hold B for the whole thing. Alright, so jump kind of out this leaf and pull back and you should fall right through. Again, by this leaf I mean that leaf. If you don't get it, you can just stand in here and wiggle around until you get it and jump occasionally, but don't jump too much if you're trying to wiggle around because sometimes you're technically not on the ground so it puts you in flying rather than jump. And flying's bad as a bee if you're not planning to do it. Yeah, you don't want to land on that leaf opposite me. You kind of just want to aim for it. That's more the angle you want to be jumping onto, not the um, place you want to hit. You can't lose too much time on this, I'd be surprised if you lost more than a minute or two, even on your first try, but it's just something that you can save a little bit of time on. You want to jump and press B two times. Um, you can kind of use this ball to keep you flying and grab that note and that note. Uh, if you don't use the ball, you just hit the ground like earlier. That was still pretty late. Hit the ground there if you don't hit the wall. So if you use the ball, you can just kind of keep yourself there and make it to the note. Uh, you can walk just straight through there. Um, can't walk up here. That's where you can start walking through. You can walk through all this area. So that's why you can do it. I like to aim for this black line and just walk through it. It's a lot easier as the bee than banjo for sure. Uh, this room's awful. Uh, Jack has a really good strat. JC Tomo has a really good strat. Um, his A spacing is different than me, so I don't understand his strat. What I do is I line myself up with the edge of this shadow here, this square shadow, rectangle, I guess. And then I hold B, and I hold forward-ish, and I press A once, and press A again to fly. Let go of B, press A again, and then press A again. That was too high, and I'm really not consistent with this. You, I probably need to be holding up a little bit more to nosedive. So that's good. Um, you don't want to press A too soon, I guess, because uh, otherwise you go too high. Yeah, so that's what you want to sort of do. It's an awful room, really. Like, I'm still not consistent at it. And because, like, you're basically not going to get up to Gobies unless you're on a pretty good run, you don't get to do it that often. 
Yeah, all I can say is after you got that first night note, just wait a little bit before you press A. Which I seem to be failing at doing. Yeah. This is not a good trick. It's that second note that seems to be the hardest for me. It's either one or the other, isn't it? I don't like this trick at all, but um, yeah, it's just unfortunate. If you're going to miss a note, the middle note is probably the best one to miss because it's really easy to get. If you miss a note, you can always just go back up and get it. I'd recommend getting it after you've gotten the rest of the stuff at the back, like I'm doing here. If you can grab it in flying so you can just fly straight off. I'll show you what you to do if you get all the notes though. So you get the last note in this corner, then you fly here, you want to try and land on the nose of this guy, and then you get out of flying, you just walk to this note. Then if you get this one in the corner, jump as you turn around, so that's good movement. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have any bit of strats for that room. You get the footnotes here, don't go into flying. Get the footnotes. Thanks to Isotage for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jump and then two taps here. I think you can do one tap. It's kind of about the same to do one or two there. You just land on the slope under that area if you do one tap. I used to have really good strats for this, but for some reason I can't remember them. Um, hold B in six taps after you've jumped. You should, you might even be able to grab that note in flying. That was my old good strat. So you want to basically just grab this note, then jump or fly down. Grab this note. I still have good strats for this part though. Jump here. Then you want to jump out. Uh, don't hold B here till about now. And then you can hold B. And you'll just fly straight forward. Uh, this is something that's a little bit harder on emulator. Unfortunately. There we go. So that's what you want to do. You want to grab that note. The trick to getting that is not holding B for that whole flight. And that's how you get that note. Just don't forget that there's four notes on that quick door closes quickly species pyramid thing. You can either fly up here or walk here. Um, I haven't made up my mind yet. I think walking is probably better. Especially since that can happen when you fly. You really want to be careful not to go out of control flying with the bee. This part's awful. Alright, now here you want to um, kind of fly. Um, it's almost like you want to do two taps. Yeah, you hold B, you do two taps quickly, and hopefully you grab that note on the way up. And 
and then jump down from there or there, depending on whether you got that night in flight. Yeah, you want to do this. Uh, between the 69th and 70th note, I'm not sure whether flying or walking is faster. I do flying. There's a mumbo token in between them, so you don't get that. Jump and then three taps of A to get out of that little moat thing. Then you want to fly down here. Uh, my note reference where I check it is I want 72 when I come out of that note. I guess 77 is how many you need for gobies. But I check it just before that 77th one for some reason. Is there anything really annoying with that level is jinxy? Alright, so you just want to jump and tap A once here. Hold B for a little bit. Let go of it around now and then start nose diving. That let go of B was a little bit early, but I still made the nose dive. Jump out here. You can go a little bit out of bounds there. I like it for the nav. Remember these walls are only solid from one side, so coming back in bounds is really easy. Going out's hard. Um, don't worry about Mumbo's text. He doesn't actually transform you back. He just yells at you. He will transform you back coming out of the room, not coming into the room. So this clip's awful on emulator. Um, I did a take of this tutorial a little bit earlier and I actually couldn't get this clip at all on emulator. It might actually not work on emulator. I'll show you what you need to do and I'll make a separate video on console and link it. What you want to do is basically fly at this corner here. So you want to fly at that corner. If you go, if you go up to the top like that you're doing it wrong so you want to fly into the corner it's just jump and then tap a once do not hold b if you hold b you can get the clip on emulator i'll show you if you hold b you just go out the back i'll show you the clip but if you hold b you go out the back so it's kind of hard on emulator it's like a really um I don't know what to call it but it's kind of like rba except it's even more focused on don't Void out rather than just get the clip. Yeah, so this clip, I think it might actually be impossible in emulator to do without voiding out, well, without going out the back. So the strategy is you want to just jump in that corner. Uh, press A once after you've jumped. You don't want to press A more than once. Um, yeah, so that's the strap for that. And I won't be able to get it on emulator for some reason. But. I'll show you another way you could get in. Maybe if you end up running this on emulator, which you are allowed to do if you don't have a power console. Um, this is just harder with the nav. That's the reason people don't do it. As you can see, I'm not very practiced at it. But this is how I'll have to get into bubble gloop since I'm on emulator. I don't know what it is about that one clip being so hard on me, but it is. Far out. The issue with doing this navigation is a lot of the room doesn't render where you'd want it to. So, um, yeah. If you, if you do decide to run on Emi, you'll probably have to figure out how to do this consistently. It's not too bad, it's just, um, it's not that much slower either. It's just that it's easy to mess up the nav. I guess it's a matter of just being used to it though. You probably get it. There we go. Alright, looks like I'm in. I might save the state in here just in case. Ah, uh, see, I'm right behind the door. Yeah, cool. So sorry I have to get in that way. I'll make a video on console doing that clip. But yeah, just make sure you don't hold B for that clip. I flew a bit too far there over this note, but I just grab it. Uh, jump, press A twice after you jump. So there's three in total. Grab these. It doesn't matter what order you grab these in. It's probably best to grab them in the order I did just there, but it doesn't matter. A once after the jump. Twice here, so three and two.
Cool down. Uh, this is where my route differs. I walk to these notes. The other route gets these after. You can watch, uh, probably watch the other bubble loop. This is really good. Um, tap A three times after you get off here. And then you want to pull back to get these notes. I know this is slower, but these notes are pretty awful, especially if you miss them. I'm pretty happy with my bubble leap, even though I do it differently. It's sub world record, so... <sighs> Don't do that. Try and land on this pillar here, and then you want to drop down and grab this snake. This maze is all about landing on pillars and dropping down. So you want to land on this one, drop down. Grab these two. Um, try and land on that one. Uh, this one is really easy because you just fly right to the back and you just land on the pillar against this wall. Because the pillar is right against the wall and the wall stops you, it's essentially as if it had infinite width. This one's probably the hardest one to do. Uh, this is another pillar against the wall. Uh, this is why I like getting the notes on top of the Mr. Vile area walking rather than now, because I can just do a fly here, hold B, and I line up perfectly. Uh, other people would have to grab those extra notes now. But, I mean, that's so nice. I'm not going to get rid of that. Now, if you have zero lives here, definitely grab this extra life. I'm going to do it just to demonstrate. <sighs> Alright. So, I did it just to demonstrate. Um, you only need it if you have zero lives. If you have one, you might want to consider it. I noticed that I fell on the hut just to stop myself. Um, like before I grabbed those four notes, I fell on that hut area. That was just so I didn't have to land. Um, you can get up here with two taps of A, but three is probably more consistent. Two taps brings you really nicely. I did two taps just then. Although I did two taps just then, and I didn't even realize you could do two taps before I did two taps just then. So I'll have to investigate that. I walk to the notes on these feet, other people um, fly. I think walking is better. It's just hard to land when you fly. Uh, 83 notes for BGS. I'm just going to show the totals because we're done now with all that. Um, Alright, so I'll go from the start. I'll just make sure we have 810. Yeah, we do. 34 Gs, we only need 33 technically. Um, Spiral Mountain Time, that was really bad, it's supposed to be 54. You only need two Jiggies in Grunty's layer, that's where I got the other one. Alright, so I'll just show these totals. Um, if you don't have 810 notes here, I recommend you go fly to Mumbo's there and then uh, transform back into Banjo. You don't need any Mumbo tokens to do that. And then um, you just do the tank top turtle thing. Yeah, so you want to fly to... If you don't have 810 notes, what you want to do is fly to Mumbo's, trans back into Banjo, slam this guy's feet, and then... Um, and then get the notes in there. You can probably death walk in there too. Just um, don't do that. Uh, try and find that out before you do this whole area as a B though. In the same bit of time. You have to slam the feet with Banjo anyway. There's notes on top of the feet. So yeah, 83 notes and BGs. And then you fly out here. You want to hold B for this whole flight. And you should make it really nicely on this with a bit of nose diving under. The platform kind of snaps the B onto it. So it should be fine. Alright, so you just fly out of here, and... You get D-Trans. This is another spot to grab a life if you want to. As long as you have more than zero, technically you're fine. I should have talent it there.
Again, there's this kind of shallow water thing here that you can just town truck through there. You get used to all this movement in here because you'll do it for FFM setup. So I actually have a count for the end, like getting to this leaf here. I've done it that many times. I'll show you the count. So you time truck one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Peck out of it and roll and high jump. Um, still not perfect. There's a like a jump you can do. You time truck and you jump up onto the leaf, but I don't like doing that because you got to get out of time truck here anyway. So yeah. Um, when you're doing FFM setup. You can town try up here and jump through because that night door will be gone. But I don't recommend that, it kind of gives you bad muscle memory. So just flap up here and roll. And then do that. Um, even when you're doing FFM and there's no night door there, I think you should. Because otherwise, um, when you're in a run, when you finally get up to here, you'll end up just town trotting and wasting time. Anyway, so you go through this loading zone, try and get the whole warp town trot thing if you can. That was a bit of a slow one, but it's still saved time. Alright. Here's Furnace Fun, so we want to be breaking out the Furnace Fun calculator now. Um, I enter these answers from German. You don't have to enter them from German. Ah. LRB. Yes, that was very useless. <laughs> If you don't know the answer to a question that gives you like three numbers as a choice, it's often the middle of one. Like, when I did my first take of this tutorial, I got all the questions that weren't the middle number, but I promise it usually is like, how many gates do you pass through in Boggy's race? Like, um, how many links are on Clanker's chain? Stuff like that. Stuff that you wouldn't even remember. Stuff like how many notes does it take to open Mumbo's note door and G's to open Mumbo's and Stuff like that, that's not always a middle number. Anyway, I do this square first, so I have more information for the Joker square. So, let's see if your memory is foggy, what's the name of my pet? Doggy. So, I'm going to search Doggy, and it says Ripper. It highlights Ripper, so that's what I pick. And then I click F1 here. You can see, um, if you weren't sure, Ripper was down there, that's where it was highlighted. Well, it's underlined, actually. So, yeah. Um, that's how you use it. If you know where the answers are, you don't have to type it in. Alright, here's a Joker Square. You need to get this right. If you get it wrong, die. Like, seriously. <laughs> because it... Um, you need the jokers, don't try and do the mini games. That's Nab Nut's house. And if you're not sure where to get the furnace fun calculator, I think it's uploaded on speedrun.com. Alright, so we want to skip this um, square, you just press B and you'll use one of your Joker cards. That's why we go to the Joker square. And I do Grunty first so that it narrows down the amount of patterns that it could be. Just helps with the Joker square in case you get a Grunty question. Oh, I clicked down. It didn't register, that's unfortunate. Those coloured frogs are red and yellow by the way, the green's the odd one out. You need to get this one right, but you don't skip it. Alright, so I'm gonna Google Ryan's. And it says bursting boils there, so that's what I'm going to click. Well, I wasn't going to Google Rams, <laughs> that's a bit silly. I'm going to type in Rams. Um, next one. Oh, 
Or not, sure. We'll get you probably. Yeah. See, this is another one where it's probably the middle number. So if it's something that you're not going to remember like that, just go with the middle one, because it usually is like how many gates in Bobby's Race links on Flanker's Chain. Uh, I think this is one that it actually isn't though. I'll try. Yeah. Um, eight turtles. I don't know how there's eight turtles there, but there is, I guess. Right. Uh, another grandy question. I'll try and show you what to do if you don't want to type it in. Alright, uh, where does she like to sleep? And that... Um, I don't know where that actually is, but I'll show you what happens if you do know where it is and you don't want to type it in. Where would she like to sleep? Um... Here we go. In a dumpster, on a pile of treasure, or in a pigsty. It's this line here. On a pile of treasure is blue, so that means it's the most likely. I'll click that. It was right, so I'll left click it. If it was wrong, I'd right click it. So, the hotkeys are, if you've typed it in and it's underlined, right is F1, wrong is F2. If you're just looking at it, you click it, you left click it if it's right, you right click it if it's wrong. Alright, so this is um, Furnace Fun Skip. Um, this trick is a little bit precise. I'll show you the working version first. There's supposed to be six, I'm going to click more. You want to get the question wrong. So that works. Now what you don't want to do is, you don't want to go too low. Because that happens. And you don't want to go too high, but it's kind of hard to go too high. I'll try that. We'll see if that's too high. No. So yeah, it's really hard to go too high. The stuff that you want is the line between the squares there. Kind of want it to like draw a line between Banjo's feet. That's the setup you want. Try and go higher rather than lower. As you saw, it's really hard to go too high. It has happened to me before. I don't know what the wrong answer is actually. Um, of course, I get it right. I don't want it wrong. Yes, yeah, so that works. So the line you want to like make it draw a line between Banjo's feet. Try and go higher rather than lower because it's really hard to actually get it too high. And as far as I know, you don't actually it the angle that you're facing doesn't actually matter. So, you can face on pretty much any angle. Alright, now that's out of the way. There's a slow way to do this. You walk around, do that. I used to do that until very late into when I was running. Or you can jump across. But this jump's scary because you can only jump that high and you can't flat while you're on the board. So if you're jumping really far back, you know, you want to be jumping from further out. Even then, it's kind of... It's usually a lot more consistent than that. Don't be scared because I missed it twice there. It's usually a lot better. I go for it runs now, so. Ah, oh, that was weird. Um, if you jump too late, apparently you can't flat. Yeah, but it should be alright for you. Alright, so get... Like, if you're missing only one health, you want to make it up to full health, grab that life if you need it. Um, only if you've got zero lives, you should grab that. Don't grab it if you've got more than zero. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend a split here, a split for Door of Grunty Skip, and a split for the end, of course. Um, also, you want a split for entering Brazizi Peak, and a split for... Um, a split for entering Mad Monster Mansion, and probably a split for entering Click Clock Wood. Um, I don't do the seasons in Click Clockwood personally, but um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Alright. 
Dork round tea. <laughs> Time for some fun. This trick is infamous. Uh, what you want to do is just peck at this door. Don't get the, like, go out wide so you don't get this cauldron activated cutscene. It's just a cutscene that you don't need. Alright, this trick is considered to be frame perfect. Um, it's considered to be frame perfect. But I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. I'm pretty good at this trick. Honestly, like... I really don't worry about it. Zoom out your camera here. And what we want to do is clip through these stairs. So, you want your camera... See this dot on the wall here? You want that to line up with the frame. As, the closer they are, the better. So if I do some walking, I can change how close they are depending on where. Kazooie's and just messing around with the camera. That's really close there. Um, honestly, I don't look at that anymore. I just do it. So it just that's a good way to know if your camera's zoomed out because it sometimes looks like it's not zoomed out. And it's a good way to know like if you got the right camera angle and stuff. But once you get used to it, I don't use it anymore. Because we make strut noises when she walks. So you want to be counting those. Now, a lot of people do five. Don't do five. Do six. Um, six is good, it's great. What you don't want to do is be doing fives, then try to do a six, and then say, oh, it didn't work, and then go back to doing fives. Because it feels like you've tried for several minutes to do sixes, whereas you only had one shot at it. Sixes, um, you void out a lot more, but it, there's so much, like, you get in so much more often. And, like, it's so good that often I don't even void out once even though it's more likely when you do sixes. So I'll show you what you do for this clip. What you want to do is you basically walk against this stair, you hold right and you want to go for like six trots. I'm just going to do the void out here. I'm not going to try and jump around. All right, so there. Um, you fall and it, by voiding out, what happens there is you have to walk back here and make sure you don't get that cauldron cutscene again. If you want to practice, you should get that cauldron there. Um, also, on your FFM file, I'd recommend having that cauldron activated so that you can practice this on your FFM file. So you want to do six trots, and then on, on your sixth trot, try and do it on it. It's The timing's a little bit after it, but if you try and do it on it, you'll get it most of the time, because by the time you press it, then you probably end up doing a little bit after it. So it's a little bit after, but try and aim for the sixth trot to do your jump. You want to hold right-ish, a little bit up and right. And then you want to, when the sixth truck comes, you want to hold forward and jump. I jump out really far from the path and then I peck back in. A lot of people don't do that. But I basically, my path is I go out and then in, basically. A lot of people just go like that, kind of up there, but I don't like that. And if you jump too far left, like, that you'll come out on this side of the door still so yeah i kind of aim to jump into this area anyway that's the door of grunty skip and you can see how consistent i am so you should really do six clips all right um so that's when it doesn't happen that's when you don't get the clip Again, that's when you don't get it. That's when you do it too early, because I did a five clip there, because sometimes you do it early by mistake. That's another early one. There's a bit of lag happening on my emulation here too. That's a four clip. You can get six clips which we go for. You can get five clips. You can get four clips, and I've even seen two clips. Obviously, you can get more than that too. So that's that is when you don't jump quickly enough. Ah, so 
I zoomed my camera out here again, just to recap. That was a forklift. But you see, since I'm already holding sort of right, often I just fall through the other side of the stairs and I don't void out. That's why this strat's so good, because even if you do get the five clip for some reason, um, you don't... Like, even if you do get the five clip, you haven't started holding forward yet, so you don't actually void out when you get a five clip. Yeah, you don't, like, fall through all the way. So that was me probably jumping too far to the left. And it was also a camera flip. That was just awkward that there was a camera flip. Camera flips are pretty rare. So that was me not pressing jump fast enough. It's a five clip, but you notice I just fell through the other side because I wasn't holding forward yet, so it's all good. Me not jumping fast enough. Uh, there's a lot of lag on the simulator at the moment, so unfortunately I'm not as consistent as I should be. Yeah, but don't be discouraged if you're losing several minutes to this when you start, because it is really hard. Like, people say it's frame perfect. I'm not sure if I agree, but people do say it's frame perfect. So, yeah. Again, I think I'll just get one more and then I'm going to do a separate video about it. I don't want to spend this whole tutorial talking about Duracrunty skip. I'll do the video on console too. So one more. Just make sure that your jump angle, when you're jumping out, you want to be holding forward obviously. You want to be holding, like, if you're jumping and you're getting to around this point on the door, it's not too bad. Jumping and getting like there is probably best, but yeah, if you're jumping out of your clips, because you should be doing like one, two, three, four, five, six, jump. Well, that's a bad jump. I'm just showing. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, jump. So you want to be doing that every time. You want to be trying to jump every time. You want to be predictive, not reactive with it. But if you are jumping and you're coming out like that, you're jumping too far to the left. When you do get the clip, you're not going to get behind the door. You're just going to jump in front. Yeah, my apologies that I'm not super consistent. It's probably the emulator. There's also a lot of lag in this area when you look at the door. That was the jump, but my I was actually holding too far to the right, so I didn't go out all the way like I should have. So again, just one more and I'll do it. For some reason I can't get it anymore. It started lagging a bit more. As again the jump that I was holding too far right and usually when you make the conscious decision like I know I'm holding too far right so when I make the conscious decision to change that that's usually when you start getting clips well not clips but like door of grunty skips that's when you start getting the full skip um, sorry I can't get this anymore I think it's the lag this trick's a bit different on emulator too. That was a four clip there, but it doesn't matter because I'm still holding the right button. 
Well, not the right button, but you know. I promise this track's more, more consistent usually. There we go. Yeah, so usually that's more consistent. It's just a bit different on an emulator. I don't know the console video. Now you want to peck really low on these doors to get your pickups. I wouldn't have got feathers if I was doing a run just thing because I had 25. But when you're starting you should and if you have lower than like 15 you should. Uh, more if you like, you should need more feathers if you're less used to grunty. So I recommend a split here as you're jumping into Dingpot. A lot of, some people do it on the um, loading zone. So LRB to skip, you want to turn the camera around and then you want to jump right back up against this block. Hit a 9 eggs there. Alright, so I explained my strat. You do the ground pound timing as I did there. It's a bit hard to time, it's probably later than you'd initially expect it to be, but you can do it too late as possible, so just be careful. Then you want to wait a little bit and then you want to poop 9 x now I roll out of the way to avoid damage, uh, a lot of other people poop 6 eggs and just stay there and get hit. Now that that's bad because you can get hit off the edge, so I roll out of the way and it works almost every single time for me. I've lost, I've missed it like once or twice in the whole time I've been doing it, so I would really recommend it. I'll show it one more time. Notice the delay before I poop 9 eggs though, that's very important. Now if you fire 3 eggs straight at her, it usually doesn't hit her 3 times because they bounce her around a little bit. They can, so I'd recommend firing three and then like maybe a fourth or a fifth one. There we go. Uh, LRB, LRB, and then ground down. Alright. That was bad. Um, I saved my state really a bit too late there. Alright, I think I'm going to do the fight again. Sorry about this. Just really notice the delay before I keep the 9 next step. That's very important. If you do it too quickly, you won't keep it If I do it too quickly and I realise after I've done it, I usually shoot 12 eggs. Ah, 
Ah, that's what can happen earlier in the fight. I'm really sorry I have to do this like three times. Just use your ground pound recoil to get rid of those homing things. It's kind of annoying when you think it's going to hit and it doesn't like that. And that. Uh, whoa! Alright, I'm really sorry about this. Again, I'm not used to you as well. I have a little bit of invincibility with that ground pound recoil like after you hit the ground too, so you can do them pretty early and still make it. That's my favourite way to hit her by the way, just hit her right there and she gets hit by the three. Take off in flight, mash B. You need to skip the text, otherwise the flight pad doesn't appear at all. Alright, there we go. Turn around left, press B where you think she's going to be. Don't just wait for her to stop unless you're on the last phase. Can sort of get away with it there, but yeah. I'll show that again. Okay, mash be there. Kind of aim for where she's gonna be. And again aim for where she's gonna be. Try not to aim for where she is when she stops. It's very tempting, but don't just wait for her to stop. That last one you actually can wait for her to stop because she stops for a really long time to throw those three fireballs. And um like in that time you do have enough time to get out. The only thing that can go wrong there is if you get hit by the fireballs. Alright, um, there's a little cutscene skip you can do during the next cutscene, and it's pooping eggs into the Jinjo as it's coming up during the cutscene. Um, I'm really bad at it, I will show it though, and it, you can only do it on a very specific Jinjo. So. Look for this grate on the ground there where you come in, that one, then go to this corner. Don't fire X forward. Alright, I got it somehow. I don't know how that actually works, but it did. Uh, there is a little potential to soft lock if you do it on the last possible frame, but don't worry about that, it never happens. Again, I'm just doing more of a casual strat through these ones. I don't really have very good speed strats for this egg farm. Now you want to stand on a grunty and jump here. The gingos actually follow you and for some reason this one didn't summon. So on the last ginger that you summon, which should have been that one that I was talking about. Fire out. You want to stand under Grunty and jump, basically, because the Jinjo follows you where you go. So you want to stand under Grunty and jump, and then the Jinjo will go up to her a lot sooner rather than having to zoom towards her. Five fireballs here, and then a home one. Don't get hit by any of the five fireballs because that'll reset her cycle. You want to line yourself up with this one too. That's not really a point, it's just like a general area that you have to be in. So you want to shoot 3x, move across, shoot 2x, that was 1, shoot another 2, that was 3, <laughs> shoot another 3. 
Here, I'll try later. Hey, don't shoot three there because you get hit if you do, I think. I'm honestly not very good at this track. Then, you can actually make this before that. Uh, I forgot to, uh, for some reason that didn't trigger, but you would have had those last two egg shots that I did, you would have had them beforehand. Like, you would have got them. So, I think there's a couple of other tutorials about this Grunty fight. Smash of 32 would cover it. Um, I'm not very good at those egg shots though. So there's uh, three, then go around, two, then two, then three. Three, two, two, three is what you do. And then you can make those last ten egg shots um, in the cutscene. Yeah, just make sure you do restore your eggs before this fight. You don't necessarily have to do feathers if you have enough. Alright, um, that's all for the gameplay of this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching it. Um, I'll link a... I'll have a lot of files to link. I'll probably link a whole folder worth of files on the video. So, what I want to link is I want to link a copy of my splits and a copy... Oh, by the way, if you want to reset, make sure it at least goes to Spiral Mountain before you reset because it doesn't save until it goes through a loading zone. Um, it's probably best to just keep your credits on the end of your runs, in my opinion. Like, I think it looks nicer. But if you do need a reset, just at least wait till it gets to Spiral Mountain so that it auto saves. That's very important actually, otherwise you get internally invalid. Um, so, I'm going to link a copy of my splits so you can have some comparison. Just keep in mind Treasure Trade Cove is kind of bad in my run. I lose a minute 20 on world record. Uh, like, Mambo's and Treasure Trade Cove, I lose a minute 20, but I do talk to Brent Tilda in there. So it's more like I only lose a minute in those first few levels. Um, I'm also going to uh, link a copy of my uh, game times for just more comparison. I think it's always good to have something to compare it to. Um, I'm going to link this notepad document with a bunch of language. There's actually a lot more in this document than it looks like. But yeah, um, it just, it's got my working out in there. But yeah, um, all you really want is this line here, or at least three lines, and then you line it up with the Furnace Fun Calculator. Furnace Fun Calculator is already in speedrun.com, so you can just, I think it's in resources or something like that. Um, I'll link a document, there's a few really good action replay codes that you can use for testing. Um, one that I really like to use is... Uh, there's a code that it kind of puts you in the 810 room. Like, it sets your next location to be the 810 room. And we set it up so that it puts you on the puzzle, like the Jiggy Podium for the Grunty thing. So it's right next to um, the Door of Grunty, and you can use it to practice Door of Grunty Skip. The good thing is, um, you... So, you, the way I use that code is it's got like a button activator. If you hold D up, you go to it. What I do is I get into a demo, then I hold D up, then I skip the demo, then um, then after I skip the demo, I uh, I like I get warped into the 810 room, and since the demo already has all the moves and stuff, I use that for both Door of Grunty Skip and uh, Grunty Practice. So that's a really good code. Another really good one is a code where you can basically just fly from anywhere, so I use that to practice FP early without having to go back and spawn the fly pad. That trick's really bad because you can lose 45 seconds if you miss it once. So that's kind of why it's bad. Uh, just to note, only 33 GBs, not 34. Um, I'm sure there will be a bunch of other stuff that I include in the links. I'm going to link to a few videos. There's a few, like, um, I'll link to show you that tile skip that people try and do. And um, just a few other things like that. You'll see the description anyway. I've also did a kind of a first take of this tutorial yesterday. Um, I didn't think it was that great, so I um, I didn't delete it, but I just haven't uploaded it yet. What I will do is I will upload it and I'll put it in the description. 
I probably have forgotten to say a lot of things that I wanted to say in this tutorial and hopefully if you see both of them that can cover it. But it's just that one isn't as polished and it'll be in parts and it'll be used empty. So, um, 156.08, that's actually a better game time than I thought I was going to get, just showing through everything. I have like a 117 game time, and it's a 122.16 RTA that I have. Um, i just show my splits. World record's 119.52 at the moment. Um, it'd be good to see a bit more interest in this category. Not many people want to run it because it's on power, so it's got a bit less interest. There's my splits. There's some of best. Uh, I'll link these splits too, so you can do some comparisons if you want to know how good you're doing at levels and stuff. Just remember my TCT is horrible. Um, yeah, I wish there was a bit more interest in this, but unfortunately not a lot of people have power. Luckily for us, power region this is like the only game that's speedrun on power that I can think of. I think there's something on the NES that is, but yeah, it's annoying living in a power region having to buy an NTSC console whenever you have to speedrun, so it's a bit of a breath of fresh air for us. Unfortunately, no one wants to buy a power console to speedrun this if they don't have it. But you know, there's a few good runs of it on there, and I'd like to see a bit more on the leaderboards. Um, anyway, I'll show you the game totals. Again, I think it's nice to leave your times, uh, leave your credits and show your times on your video. You need to have your game, well you should have your game time to submit around to speedrun.com and um, you should, uh, you should keep the times on your video. I think it's a nice thing to do. So 810 notes, you should have 33 jiggies. I got an extra one to show that was the one where I clipped through Grunty's neck in get and get the bubble gloop swamp witch switch. Um, I'm, my time's like a 117 game time. Now, uh, that game time there will actually be a bit higher than the one you saw on the total screen. So what you want to do is look at the one on the total screen, then look at the one here. Um, however much longer the one here is, you want to take that off the Grunty's layer time. So it's usually two or three seconds. So if it was three seconds, which it probably was, that would be a 39.21. Uh, check your spiral mountain, you know, check all the times really. I like to keep a track of my best time, so I'll link that document in there. I'm just showing through what the totals are, don't take these times as what they should be, because these, I have to stop to show a lot of things. Yep, alright. So thanks for watching this, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I forgot to say, but if I remember I'll put them in the description. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the leaderboard soon.